Hi, my name is Jason. This is the Different Generations Podcast, and I'm just happy my arm works. I uh, broke it in the dumbest possible way. Speaking of this position, look at this pretty player here fucking dressed up. He's got on... <laughs> was that hard? It was. Did you get those at the buckle? No, no they're, they're areas. Where I got them. I've had them forever. These are like four years old. Really? I just don't ever wear pants. Were you cold when you woke up this morning? I just want to wear pants. Look at this fucking you. gimp arm you got. It's getting better. Look at that. Look at how much bend there was right there. Oh, look at that sweet score. Which hand do you wipe with? <laughs> right. That'd be weird. I'm right handed. Who teaches himself to. How do you spread in? your butt cheeks when you wipe with only one hand? Oh, you got to get in there. Just wedge it in. <laughs> So it's like a nice. Hug. Whoa, whoa! That, <laughs> that, that's, you're kind of at that, Jason. You're kind of at that Jason, age. I man. mean, that's that's. Uh, you're kind of at that age. What can you expect? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no happens. shame in it. No shame in it. <laughs> don't don't be sad about it. I'm not. I'm not. Got to work a little harder. <laughs> I, shit, you can. Uh, they, they sell them on TikTok. I will give some of them gas station boner pills like you buy. Well, I'm gas station boner pill will bring the sweat out in you. Right <laughs> Ah, oh, like I think I had I think I stacked some yellow jackets one time and washed oh. it down with a uh I mean y'all never did many things? Oh uh, I think I think I just I, I I think whenever I bought my yellow jackets, I thought you were supposed to take the whole packet because it was such a small <laughs> packet and I washed it down with a five hour energy, then crushed a monster over the top of it. I was hallucinating <coughs> in the desert of Arizona. So Are you are y'all too young to remember many things? Um no, I used to crush those up and oh, put them in my butt. Bro, <laughs> We would take so many mini things, like you could feel your hair growing. Like it's just caffeine and ephedra in a pill. Like those things, they sold them in all the gas stations, Braxton. There's just these little white pills with a cross on them and just pure caffeine and ephedra. <laughs> just be. He don't know. What, what's ephedra? I don't know. Ephedra? It's like, I assume it's what was in the original. It was what was in some stimulant. Ephedra it? used to be, it was the CEA, the CEA stack. That everybody used for a long time. Caffeine, ephedra, and aspirin. That's what all the bodybuilders were using. I just but, inferred that. Hold on. Here was, here's a bodybuilder. Do you know what ephedra is? Ephedra? Yeah. Isn't that like um, crack cocaine type? It is not. Yeah. But it was in a uh, Red Bull when it came out. They took it out. See, I just inferred because it's mixed with caffeine. When would, when did Red Bulls come out? A long time ago. I, it was back when I was still probably 96. 97 because i remember drinking them smoking cigarettes driving from arkansas back to texas just being a wild child braxton your mic is all high it's all up in your face <laughs> where do you what do you want it you want it low it, whoa, it's fine it's whoa. not on camera so i used to how it was you sound great i used to stop okay. at that gas station at the it's just in, in your way at Corey. The, uh, it is. do what I used to stop at that gas station on, was it 69, where the uh, res is? Yes, yeah. yeah. Then, uh, it's a good so highway. I could, I could buy a... Uh, Nobody knows where that is. No, I'm trying to, I'm asking you. It's the uh, Caddo, it's the Durant, the reservation just above Durant, where everybody goes. It's not Windstar. Whoa. Reservation? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about reservations. Yeah. yeah. Give me your thoughts on them. I was just curious about yours. I well, don't know. I used to stop at this one. So oh. I could buy because I could buy uh, lottery tickets there when I was eighteen. What, well, Jason? Actually, in all seriousness, do you know? Like, isn't there some weird thing about what laws that they can prosecute? Like, they have police. Because I've always heard forces. that it's like weird federal crimes couldn't be prosecuted no. or something. I don't know that they do have their own police forces. Mm -hmm. When we, we, me and Megan got married on the Bernalillo Res in off. Albuquerque. What's and the what's the uh, marriage laws like that? Do the wife get a hundred percent or one hundred and twenty five percent? I don't know how that works, but we got married on the, the reservation at the resort they had there. There was a golf course, and uh, we had to go through all their stuff. They made us sign deals that said we wouldn't bring alcohol, and we had to pay for it there. All this stuff, so I don't know. Why can't See, Indians have alcohol? Oh no, you just had to buy it there. <laughs> oh, you had to buy it at that that's restaurant. That's good. They, that's they good. made you pay it. And they're like, if you bring it here, we'll let them throw you in jail for not abiding to our laws. So I don't know. So, but but Indians can't drink alcohol, right? I don't know. They have it there, so I would assume they can. Oh, thought there was like 
the fire water bad or something. I don't know. Have you have you seen uh fire water bad? <laughs> have you seen uh have you seen Peter Pan? No. Well, when the Indians got drunk, you got a little weird. What Peter Pan did you watch? You don't remember Peter Pan? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> oh yeah, it's full of racial slurs. There's a there's a gene that Asian people have prominently Russian people and Indian Native Americans indigenous people of the americas um y'all don't remember make it hard for them to metabolize all he's correct so that's why you get asian flush same thing there's certain there's certain but y'all native americans really, have a have y'all hard time metabolizing the high sugar diet all so i remember is how they something them coming back from asia across yeah the right so that it's those genetic hmm. so the so the kids but then you get pan you have like they go to that Asian Indian party. Populations that aren't affected by. See, I guess I don't remember that. You just don't remember it. Stuff like, like I remember weird bits and pieces. I like I remember like there's a dog chained oh. up outside that always wanted to go with them or something. What? And and Peter Pan. Every trailer park we go to on a daily basis. <laughs> no, this is Peter like Pan. Like in my house, there's a and fucking like, dog that just wants to get in my car. Sneak in there and then uh, get all the the homies. They'd go out party all night. Dude, have you go seen fly the theory? Around. Have you seen the theory that Hook was the bad guy? That basically, or the good he guy. He was Hook, the bad guy. Hook, Hook was the good guy because he was trying to stop Peter Pan, who just was kind of grown and sneaking in and stealing kids all the time. I could get by that. Like, I like Captain You Hook. never think about it like what? that, but like he was trying to stop this <laughs> guy with his group of adults that was constantly going and taking children out of their bedrooms what? and oh. taking them to Never Never Land. Was Peter Pan an adult? He was like pseudo adult. He was like halfway there, like teenager, like late huh. teenager, I think. So kind of weird. Kind of creepy, like just children. Like, come fly away with me. We'll play yeah, but, forever. But, I mean, this is what I remember about Peter Pan. I haven't, I haven't seen it in a while. But they, I feel like I have to lean they over. party with the Indian kids, and the Indian kids get drunk, and they start acting wild, and the other kids start acting wild. I don't remember that part. I remember them like eating food and having a food fight or something. And there was, there was drinks involved. It, it was in containers with uh, X's on it. I think they got it off the pirate ship. Was this on the which movie was it? Hook? This is rum. No, the original. I don't remember the original. The original. The the cartoon. The cartoon. I don't even remember even watching. They it. um they were having a good party, and they I mean they sung that really. I mean Disney had a lot the, of out there stuff. There's well, some, it was the Red Man song. The I don't. I mean, I, I just remember. Here's here's how I remember did, it. Like like I remember the the. Washington Commanders, the Redskins, Washington Redskins, were a football team, right? And Captain Hook run around screaming that word all over that movie, Peter Pan. What did he scream? Those blasted Redskins. Oh yeah, all over. I don't remember. Well, I haven't seen it. Oh yeah, you can go. You can go. Uh, I don't know if So Hill could bring Disney, it up. Disney had a lot of that. Like if you. Uh... Yeah, but I mean that that Uncle Remus uh, Song of the South movie they made has like been wiped off everything. You don't see it nowhere. I, I like, would it have is super never racist. heard of it. Super racist. You can you can find it. I well, I don't remember what the, I don't remember the real plot of of uh, of Peter Pan. I just remember when I watched it in Jungle Book. Jungle Book was uh, like the original cartoon Jungle Book. Um, had some like whoa moments once well, I was grown, dude. Um, I, the one that's always struck me going to Disneyland and Disney World was the the log ride flume they have was built around the the Br'er Rabbit story. The what? The Br'er Rabbit. Do you remember the Br'er Rabbit? It's there's. That, some, I don't. I don't know why, but that yeah. That there's some racial familiar. undertones there. It's uh. I mean, there's a whole character that it's very racial really? undertone, and and the whole ride was built around it. But you know, civilization moves on, right? Well, yeah. Civilization is a weird thing. It's a weird thing. Like, uh, who was it? Um, just recently used a, used the Q word in the LGBTQ. Um, Trump, he talks about Q all the time. No, the Q word. The, the Q word in LGBTQ was used to describe a set of men um, on the side of the street and a guy... Uh, got fined forty thousand dollars by the NBA. I don't know what his name was. I remember you telling me what about that. Was it using a derogatory term, or was it just? Well, there was the Q word and the N word. Oh, that probably made it derogatory. He didn't get in trouble for the N word. That's he got crazy. in trouble for the Q word. <clears throat> but the whole deal for me, like whenever I heard that, I was like, I was like, man, imagine being a kid, Braxton's age, like 
this is this is this is bad he's driving down the street he sees that he comments on it i think it was his girlfriend that was videoing he uploaded it to instagram instagram gets mad his employer who's the nba finds him 40 grand and he has to come out and apologize i don't think it probably changed any of his behavior i bet he still uses that word all those words to describe whoever he sees whenever he sees it but he had to be publicly shamed as a part of the as a part of the process yeah okay I do think the other side of the coin, though, is it's like, well, you did post a video publicly shaming someone else. I remember. It's like. Yeah, but that's not. Look. You, yes. True. True. Do you, Have y'all heard any mic'd up NBA games? Uh, mm. No. Okay. I've just seen the well, football just, just, outtakes. But, yeah, yeah. Or football uh, outtakes. But I remember, I remember being a child and hearing that word used in the other use the Q word used in the correct sense to mean like strange, like old people saying, well, that's this. And they were just talking about, yeah, that's but, a strange but I, thing. Look, I, here's, here's what, here's where it is. Like this, is what it is for me. This guy's on his own time. Mm-hmm. He represents the NBA. No doubt about it. That's his employer. He gets fined 40 grand. That's whatever, whatever, whatever they want to make it. Okay. That's, that's their prerogative. If you sit courtside at the NBA, at an NBA game, while the men that are employed by the NBA are working, you're going to hear much worse, worse oh, language. Sh- or, and you never hear about an NBA player getting fined one for the words that are said. And there's kids sitting courtside. You know what I mean? Right. You're going to hear it. Like you're. It, it, have y'all been to a basketball fucking no. court? I You've never been to mean. a basketball no, just court. Just like college games. Never been I'm to talking like about a basketball game. court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the exact same size in the NBA, and there's a dude sitting right behind the bench of players. You don't think you're going to hear worse words? I don't know. I'm guessing. Oh, definitely. I mean, it'd be like, I mean it's like when well, we talked about this yesterday. The the trades haven't changed. Like the same. Like oh no, every no. every electrician is still the same electrician that I worked it, with for I, years. I, I seen a video this morning. That laid out the stats of men. Ninety three percent of the trades are male, like male employed. Yeah, so, I know one badass. There's a badass electric electrical company owned by a lady here in DFW. Well, I, she owns an awesome company, but I, it's just not in our trade. Well, they laid out all Very the few. all the stats for the trades and what toxic masculinity means and like how that works and all that. And I was like, but they were talking about it. You know, everybody hates. On masculinity, except for the buildings it builds, the fucking the electricity it provides. You know, Mr. Ban from the Internet, Jordan Peterson, talks about that all the time. He, he brings up those stats. He's like, you want equality, but why aren't you demanding equal brick bricklayers and not just well, ordering positions? Oh, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know anything about that. Like, I don't I don't I just I, I, I find it like men being under attack. I, I, I mean, I just. It's like I, I don't know. I don't I'm, I don't buy into it. It doesn't happen to me. You know what I mean? So it's like nobody's attacking me on a daily basis because I have a wiener. They're probably attacking Braxton though. <laughs> but anyways, it doesn't happen. It doesn't affect my life. So I don't I don't dive into it much. But when I did see that I thought, you know, I do see I do see some angry people out there on the internet shouting about nothing and then you know what I mean, in the very building that they're standing in. It's like Man, a lot of toxic masculinity laid this up. I mean, a lot of uh, there was there was, there was some there was some uh, derogatory statements made about a wide those, range of human beings while this was being built. There all, the, were, all those pictures of the dudes sitting on the like uh, the girders up in New York City when they were mm-hmm. building like those giant skyscrapers, just dudes sitting on no safety equipment, just hanging out Did, on it. You see the linemen in Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just sleeping in the back of their trucks. Just sleeping All in the back of their trucks. Got a hammock strung between the bucket and the back of the cat in the headache rack. Sleeping. Get, getting electricity back on. No, Nowhere to use the bathroom. Like, they're just, they're just in a Walmart parking lot. And we've all done it. You know, you haven't, but... Well, I never did like y'all did. Like, my parents lived in that Walmart parking lot in North Dakota when they were up there because it's the only place to go. I mean... But I can't tell you how many parking lots I've slept in between jobs. Yeah, just sleeping in between jobs, getting two, three hours of sleep, going back out there, doing it again. And they're and they're putting turning electricity back on. But did did you see what else they got uh, famous for in uh, in Florida? Did you see it? Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the the like Florida TikTok or not the Florida Tinder, 
like blew up with linemen. And so like all the chicks on in Florida were like, this is my Tinder right now. And it's like all linemen. That's hilarious. And they're like scrolling <laughs> Just through. The, the toughest, roughest dudes they've ever met in their life. <laughs> Maybe. But, but they're in there. And then one dude got identified and he has a chick and he's like TikTok famous. So he's a lineman that's TikTok famous. And he got like somebody seen him in there. They're like, oh, that's Blake. He's on Tinder. He's got a really hot old lady on his TikTok. And so then <laughs> get this, exposed. Then his wife sees it. <laughs> not his wife, girlfriend. But then he's like, he does a TikTok. He sees it. And, he, and so they're like, you know, TikTok women are angry about it, so they're putting him on blast. And so he makes a video, and he's like, "Apparently, I'm in Florida, cheating on my old lady, but he's in like Utah or somewhere." So wasn't him. And then the other gentleman, I think I favorited his video. He's like, "You got me. You ruining my life." The real Blake. I'm out here cheating on my old lady. He, but he's, anyways. This is uh, this is it. He'll bring it up. Do you know which one? It is? That's it. That's it. That's the that I'm currently banned from TikTok right there. That you one. are? No, this oh. one. So, Tinder Blake. <laughs> this is Tinder Blake. That's hilarious. So the original picture right there on the left was in a string of pictures of a girl that's like, "This is currently my Tinder right now in Florida. This is what Florida Tinder looks like right now," and somebody spotted it, and so. Anyways, can we hear this? Will we be able to hear it? Let's yeah. See. Let's go. Go, honey, some feet. Oh, just got off the pole. Been working because that's what I came to Florida to do. I get back in a truck. More of this drama, me and this other Blake guy. I'm cheating on my old lady while I'm off in Florida. Yeah, that's me. I don't, I don't know what the big deal is. Fucking got me. You got me. Ruined my life. <laughs> so, so that's the actual guy that's on Tinder. The other guy that's actually TikTok famous was the one that they were blaming as being him. He, he is. He did a stitch. I think that's a stitch with the other guy. The other guy. Um, he stitched him. So it should be right there, maybe. Or it's because gonna be the, it, the algorithm will definitely show it to you now. Because the internet it. sleuths went and found him. They were like, Oh, and they found the wrong guy. Well, yeah, it was he that <laughs> picture on the left. On right. the left. I got it. They was got the just same in a mustache. string of, of pictures <clears throat> on a girl's TikTok saying this is currently um Florida Tendo right now. So um Did you get the bass fisherman for this week? That's the best video of the week. The dudes that got caught with one pound weights in their in their bass. Yes, <laughs> it wasn't bass; it was walleye. Or walleye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they uh, <laughs> they had a real hard time. But but the actual Blake, which I don't know, I I mean the the algorithm would uh, normally show it to you. It might be there. Normally I mean, it would be linked, but this is a screen recording. Yeah. Let's see, Blake Demel. Yeah, that's that's him. That he uh, he's the one. That they thought was cheating on his old lady, but it's really the other Blake. Oh, oh. look at that! No his, more account. His account's been <laughs> hammered. What? No. Yeah he he got the he got the smoke there. Hold on, did uh? No. The 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 fucking famous. He may have killed his account. No, I wouldn't. I mean, he had he had one hundred fifty thousand followers. That's him with the long hair right there. Yeah, that's him with his old lady. And I mean, I don't know if that's a video right there, but he wasn't even in Florida. I don't know why he would have killed his um, TikTok account. But this is the person they thought it was. That's the person they thought it was. I don't know. What do you think about it, Braxton? I mean, Technology a great thing. Yeah. I mean, that's it to the left. So it's his, his account. Yeah, that's his response video. That, just let it play. Yeah, that's him. But his, but his, his TikTok's dead, but you can still see that video. So that seems just like a, Maybe a TikTok glitch. issue, yeah. 
I mean, because <laughs> so, we're all on his page, we can't. I'm, none of us can get there. I'm gonna throw a shout out to lineman for somebody's who been an electrician for a lot of years. Those guys got the biggest sack on the planet. Like climbing a pole out there, uh, you know, 13 k working 13 kV in a freaking hurricane in a storm. That's the most insane job. Like, well, have you, have you 500 seen, kV? Jesus, for, uh, jumping off a helicopter. Have you seen them throwing those fuses back in? I've thrown those fuses back in, but, but I don't want to do it. No, but have you seen them throwing them back in with a hurricane? Oh no, no, no! It's great. They're just throwing fuses in. They're blowing up right in their face, and they're like, God. "Yeah, we still ain't got it, guys. <laughs> like, keep well, going." Do you just then they just go back down the line and find the next one? Find the to, next one. To, yeah. to keep finding breaks. Those shotgun fuses suck, dude. It, the last ones I did were in Homa. That was all 13 kV, and I don't. That's me. That's considered medium voltage. That's not even high voltage. That oh. doesn't even make any freaking sense. Do you know what I'm talking about, Braxton? Mm-mm. See if you can see a lineman. See if if TikTok will show us a lineman throwing a fuse in. Yeah, just type in shotgun fuse. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's what they are. I mean, oh yeah, but they they pop and run like. Um. Yeah, maybe not. We I guarantee you'd find one on YouTube. That's what it is. You're not logged in, um, So Hill. So, oh, we're gonna see yeah. all the So Hills weird stuff. He don't want to log in. Ooh, what's what's So Hills algorithm gonna show us? This is gonna be good. Mine is uh, mine is tuned in on cattle now. That's some good content. If y'all see my for you page, <laughs> let's see So Hills FYP. We I can. I'm not that. logged in on this thing, but we I can find log you. in with. Oh, that's all, this is going to be even better. What? It was fixing to sign in on Jess's. <laughs> oh, that would be good. That would be good. Um, like, I tell my kids every time the power okay, goes so out, I'm like, just know. Let's try again later. I tried once. Uh, <laughs> just, I, I, tell, I, I rub in my kid's face every time. Just remember, you're whining because you don't have AC right now, and there's a lineman out there in this storm <laughs> freaking yeah. hooking some shit back up. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I – um, I mean, it's always it's always a little bit wild um, whenever guys come out during a storm. But hurricane, I couldn't even imagine. Um, if you look some of the po- before and after photos of Fort Myers, how it just changed the shoreline, like uh, and guys, uh, that I mean, there was roads there that was concrete there. It's all it's all probably still there. It's just underwater now because all the sand got washed out from underneath it. It's, it's freaking terrible. I don't know laughing about that. Did you see the video of the dude that rode it out in his boat? The Florida guy? He's just climbing out of the rubble. <laughs> he like Lieutenant Dan. They, uh-uh. the, the news crew's got this dude. He's like, yep, I rode it out. I rode out like 40, 20 miles into here I am. He's like, just like piled up on top of other boats. It's a pretty cool video. Well, you know, if you get to the eye of the hurricane, you're safe in there. I don't know about that. Go I don't got that out. set of balls home. <laughs> I'd have been in Oklahoma. <laughs> I watched the perfect storm. I don't think... I don't. I don't know how real that is, but um, hundred foot waves do not look do not look fun in those size boats. And oh, I, I don't know what a, what a Cat Four hurricane pushes as far as waves. I mean, but you know those out, offshore platforms. I, I think they leave a guy out there. I'm not sure, but I think I, I w- think there is somebody. I think somebody does have to have to are hang the, out. Google that. See, are if those they, all float? Or, I know there's floating offshore platforms, and then there's fixed. Depends on the water depth. Oh. Google but, what? Um, uh, floating offshore platform. I, uh, you know those, those guys. I I, I want to say one bad some bitch stays out there to be able to close a valve. Florida or um, hurricane. Just search it. What do that? What happens to them during a hurricane? Like this is a. Uh, When a when a hurricane hits offshore plat- oil platform in the Atlantic, I'm sure they, they all they offshore evacuate. platforms are equipped with safety valves that shut in oil and natural gas in the event of storm damage. These valves ro- lock closed at regular intervals so that oil and gas cannot flow. Check the one right below it. Did they evacuate? Yeah. Here comes uh, Ryan. Ryan would be that one dude. Ryan, yeah. Would you would you stay on a so do they evacuating personnel? Shall Non-essential begins. personnel. Yeah. So no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always, I've always heard about them leaving guys out there. That's so, insane. I mean, I don't. I 
these are big boats. These are big, big, big pieces of equipment. Do you get paid like triple time for that? Like, what's the pay for that one dude that's just like, I got it, homie? Uh, I'm, I imagine there's a few of them. Um, I remember the uh, the big the BP oil spill, um, which you know, I mean, do y'all y'all? Oh, yeah. it was 2011. How old were you in 2011? Eight. So you remember the BP oil spill? Not really. It's pre fake news. It was actual news. Was it? I mean, the the BP oil spill um, was like I mean it's like a classic mistake. It's like it it's such a small mistake, and it's so easily preventable. And all it is is you you have a, a string of pipe, so that string of pipes in the hole and offshore it's a massive pipe, but and then you put cement on the outside of the pipe, so you pump cement through the inside of it and it comes up the outside, and then you set. And you wait for the cement to set up. Now, Spoon's on his no, I'm TikTok looking up right a, now. I'm looking up a video for Soul Hill. So, when the cement is liquid, its hydrostatic pressure is it, the weight, its its actual weight is holding the hydrocarbons back, right? So, its, its weight is holding it back. As it sets up, it starts clinging to the sides of the hole. As it clings to the sides of the hole gravity no longer is pulling it down when this happens if you if you do, do have um they they mix mix the cement in batches so it's like you know you're you're, you're mixing it as you're pumping it so if you have a just one isolated mm-hmm. bag bad batch it's only going to cover x number of feet of hole but if you have a issue the hydrocarbons will channel and so it'll it'll just be one little sliver of hydrocarbons trying to make it up through that cement that is still not set up. So you've got a big column of cement that is liquid going to solid. Part of it sets up before the other part, and the the hydrocarbons start channeling because it's no longer mm-hmm. putting any hydrostatic pressure on the formation. As it channels, you see it on the surface. You see it instantly. You you um, if you do what you're supposed to do, and what then after BP became like. You have to do this protocol protocol. I mean, we always did it because what, what you do is you get a, You're trying to get ahead on the rig move. So you have what's called a blowout preventer um, offshore. They have one down there on the ocean floor. Um, so it's, you know, it's down there. It might stay even after the rig moves. I don't know. I don't know what they do offshore, but you have a blowout preventer and it can, it can close the well in. So you just close the well in, you monitor the pressure. The pressure is going to build up. It's going to build up regardless. It's going to build up regardless if the cement's channeling. It's going to build up regardless if the cement's um, setting up, just depending on how much pressure you have is whether or not um, you have a channeling issue. So Hmm. after you let it set for, say, eight hours, you've got little samples that you pull out of every batch, and you can see what it is on the surface. You can see if it's set up. But say you wait on cement for eight hours, and you open the, the choke up, you bleed off the pressure, and then you close it back. If it builds pressure back, you know you're not there yet. Just wait a little longer, okay? Offshore, when they did that, so they waited on cement, they didn't have their their equipment lined up properly. So when they closed it back in, when they closed it back in, they had swapped some valves around, and they couldn't see the pressure rebuilding. So they, they said, They thought oh. they were good. They thought they were good, but they, they had swapped some valves, and they were no longer getting any pressure to that that gauge i got pressure so anyways when that when that took place when that happened um they opened it back up now at that point the well will be flowing it will start flowing and as those hydrocarbons make their way up the well they expand every time they uh, they double in size every time they come halfway up the well so the closer that it gets to the top the, the way worse off you are and so the molecule size is actually changing? Yeah, it's um, Boyle's Law, ain't it? But I don't know. I'm, I'm asking, is it because it's under so much pressure? It's under pressure at the bottom, so it could be a, a gas bubble the size of your hand, and, and the hole's 10,000 foot deep. At 5,000 foot deep, it's going to be the size of two hands. At 2,500 foot deep, it's going to be the size of four hands, mm-hmm. but it, 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 I mean, <clears throat> it starts expanding rapidly. So That's you'll start off with a little trickle, and then by the time it's rushing – you got a big problem on your hands. And that's what they had. Well, their blowout preventers weren't set up to be able to um, close in, and I think they were probably already um, moving 
they they couldn't their blind shears wouldn't wouldn't work. So when it got there, what's a blind shear? Is it like a is it like a just like it's a, big a blind gate ram? That... It cuts the pipe, and so um, you know they were still stung into it at the service, obviously, um, but they they have um, normally in all BOPs whenever you run casing they put in um, casing blowout they put out see you got blowout preventers that go around casing so like those right there at the top are made to go around pipe when you have um, a set of shear rams in they'll actually cut the pipe in half they'll pinch it in half and cut it and then sell off the well and they couldn't they couldn't uh, too much pressure couldn't shut it no I mean it's it's made to it's made to cut whatever so anyways when they got ready to shut it in and there's always one dude you know that's in a bigger hurry than everybody else that's out there um that that's cutting those corners now you got to think about it like a rig that size i think at the time um i don't know what the day rate was on it i think they for some reason i remember it being some astronomical amount but it couldn't have been right I mean, it's in the millions of dollars a day. A day rate on a rig on land at that time, we were getting about $30,000 a day for a rig. They were getting in the millions for an offshore rig. So, anyways, when God, they couldn't... What's the, what's the output got to be? to That that well was <clears throat> was was blowing out 60,000 barrels of oil a day. Um, your typical West Texas land well, you know, you hear people about three or $4,000, uh, three or 4,000 barrels a day, but... I mean that's an absolute screaming um, uh, shell well, three or four thousand well, uh, barrels a day is, or fracked well. That's insane. They all they peter off real fast. So you can see I don't. This illustration is kind of shit, but um, that's what's happening. Now, this little robot's going down there and going to going to cut the. Yeah, I don't know what the robot's point in this is. Oh. All right, this is some new technology. I don't know what they got going on, but anyways, they lost control of it. Um, and and I mean that that well, I don't know how much money they lost on the on the cleanup. I know they were fined twenty billion dollars, um, and it changed the industry forever. Now, used to you didn't have to wait on cement, like used to on land or whatever. You open it up, it's not flowing. You you'd start breaking it down immediately. Um, and then you're taking your blowout preventers off. That's literally, you know, now they got technology where you don't have to cut the casing, but you would set slips on the casing. So you would hang the casing in the wellhead and it'd have slips It'd just have a set of, you know, like a Chinese finger trap that, that the casing would set in and that would hold the casing up. They would bevel it, um, put the cap on. That's the very first thing you do before you move the rig. So the very first thing you do after you cement is take your ability to control the well away. I've been on jobs where the well start is flowing. I've, I've been right there, the person on the BOP telling the guy that's in a hurry, this motherfucker's flowing, and him going, oh, no, that's just expansion. Expansion is the heat of the cement. Cement creates heat as it sets up, sure. and it and it's expanding and it's forcing water out of the hole because water is the only thing on top of that cement, and so it's just flowing. And then eventually you're like, guys, the cellar pump's no longer keeping up. This thing is flowing, and you're setting with your BOP, which is a giant piece of equipment. I mean, uh, twenty, thirty thousand pound piece of equipment hanging on either your blocks or a set of winches, and you got to set it back down. You open the valves up to where it can flow, where so it can just it shoot out into the right. field. To where you can actually put your bolts back in and then you hammer it up. Normally you test it to make sure it can can withstand the pressure that it's about to have put on it, but obviously the test is about to be It's gonna be when you close does the this valve. Yeah, when you close that valve off, is this gonna hold up? And so you close your rams and and uh you know, you 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 see what pressure you got and then you start trying to kill the well from the surface, which is very, 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 very difficult. Um in this situation it's you know, uh I can't even remember the process of how they kill it. You've got to get weighted fluid on the outside of this pipe, so they got to strip in the hole, probably perforate it somewhere, um, and try to get some weighted fluid on top of it. I actually never never had to deal with that side of it, but I can only imagine that uh, that killing those wells has its own own set of challenges. But I have seen them move a whole entire rig off of the location, except for the BOP. 
um, because of this very scenario I just laid out, like move it off. Like it would be, they'd have the panic line open is what it's called. And so it, it would blow out out into this guy's pasture. And then when it would bridge over and not blow for a little bit, so like rocks or something would get, right. it would Air stop bubble. up, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and it just couldn't, couldn't blow as hard anymore. They would go in there with cranes and just pull another piece of the rig off and then it would start screaming again. They would say, it's too unsafe you know come off location so they go off location Sounds and about right you pull it off and then once you get it off then boots and coots or whoever your well control people are come out there and do their thing dude probably a snubbing unit i would guess I, snubbing unit i live lived downwind of an oil well fire in iraq for i don't know how long before they got it out those boots and coots guys that, that's another set of heroes i can't even imagine dudes going in there and blowing up an oil well fire put well um, they actually they set them that? on fire <laughs> yeah, you showed they're, me a they're, video of that before. Yeah, they. That's just wild. Well, I, I, I just read the Red Adair book, so that's all I know about it, and that's an awesome book to read. That dude yeah. is amazing. They, they, um, they typically want to mess with them while they're on fire. That kind of makes. I mean, that's a. You've seen them welding get, up that gas pipe. Well, they. I mean, when, it, when it's on fire, when it's on fire, there's <laughs> the fire. So the fire is what's dangerous, right? So when it's just blowing, there's hydrocarbons all around you that could catch on fire, and you're going to be a part of the fire. So they typically set them on fire. Um, well, at least you know where it's at. Well, and, and then then what's dangerous is no longer there. It's, it's on fire. It's shooting out of the ground. They it's come consuming in, that versus yeah versus lingering around and and then catching on fire. By that makes sense. We've all been at that campfire where somebody poured five gallons of diesel well, and went away they, for twenty minutes. They go in with a with a ventrally tube. So they come in with this thing. I mean, it's just, just a a tube, um, a, a piece of pipe that will bolt onto the top of the wellhead. And they, they or, or it'll it'll have its own set of slips and it'll slide over the casing and grip onto it to where it can't be blown off. It'll have a valve on it and they'll they'll go in there and this thing's really, really tall, right? And so they'll stick it over the top of it and you know, sometimes they just hold it there. They just have it over the top of it so they can work down on the wellhead and prepare it. So hydrocarbons are blowing out of the ground right here. They're down there preparing the wellhead and this ventrally tube's like 30 or 40 foot tall and the fire is burning 40 foot above your head and they're just holding it in place with a with a, a bulldozer. It's a very, very cool scene. Um, if you talk to guys that have done it, you know what I mean? They they can tell you all the different ways they put those wells out and then after they get that done and they need to they need to put the fire out, they can either close the valve or, you know, sometimes they go in there and they, they put it out with dynamite, but um, depends on if it's gas or oil, but... You can watch you can watch these uh, these blowouts and they're pretty fun pretty Those, fun to watch. Yeah, that's I I mean, thank God somebody figured out how to do it right. It was a, born out of necessity. Well, the, <clears throat> the stories about Red Adair, if you read that book, where he just had a Cadillac that was souped up, he would just get in and drive as fast as it would go to the next oil well fire, and they wouldn't even pull him over because everybody knew what he was doing out there. Like yeah. nobody would mess with him. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I mean, Red Adair. Um, the only thing I know about him is that movie that they made with, with uh, John Wayne. Right. Yeah. I haven't. Uh, Hellfighters. Have you Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. it. When I saw that movie, I haven't I, seen it. I was like, I work on that exact same rig. Oh, that's funny. So not not the rig that's in the movie, but that that style. Well, they built those rigs in the fifties and sixties, and they kept that junk iron running. I mean, that junk iron's still running in West Texas. Like they built that rig in 1950 or 60, and they just put a new cat engine on it, changed the brakes, changed the bearings, changed whatever it is, you know, weld it up whenever it breaks, um, and keep that keep that iron working. Uh, the technology didn't progress um, from 1950s. They had the compound rigs, and they went to diesel electric, which you know the principle behind di- diesel electric, don't you? Yeah. Um, it's just a generator. Same thing, same thing they do on locomotives. Locomotives, diesel electric. Same thing. At- uh your prius is doing same thing the prius is doing Except it's not diesel yeah and so they they have these diesel electrics um that was a that was the advanced technology um so they built those in the 70s and from 70s to 2004 probably 2005 that was the only technology then they came out with ac rigs which the diesel electrics were dc and then dc power and then they swapped it over to AC rigs, and um, you get the regenerative braking that you get in a Tesla on a rig. So you got this giant traction motor, motor, the 600-volt volt traction motor. That's ridiculous. Um, 
that is AC electric, sure. and whenever you let off of it, it stops. It doesn't go like like a DC when when you let off, it would just free spool. Spool down. Um, but this one stops, so it was a uh, instead of having chains, it was direct gears, um, just completely tech different technology. And then you got the joysticks, and you got the cameras, um, got the fiber optics, which fiber optics were real funny. Um, what do you think about when they roll? So we break down our rig and 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 move it every. So, 30 days and they throw fiber optic cables on it what do you think happened next they broke constantly it's the same thing that when and when i was working on the military stuff they brought in t-focal lines everywhere tactical fiber optics there ain't nothing tactical about a strand of glass it just breaks <laughs> constantly we're just throwing them things out the window Dude, they'd roll them up <clears throat> tie them off all right that just throw that one away Toss it you, in the in the trailer. You, you, like you don't understand. Like just it's it. Well, I mean, you wouldn't either if you never worked on. Like when I was a kid, I remember my dad brought home. My dad was he brought it home when they first came out. He brought home this big suitcase and had all these stones. And you would put the piece of glass in there, and you would you would put it in this puck and run it on a stone, and then go down to a finer stone and stone, like over and over. And now we're at the point where we have cam locks where they just shear it off real quick. It takes like one minute, and it uses epoxy to make it perfect. Really? There's no the, – all that work is gone. Like, I did a sixth-grade science project, and that's what I did. I made a little fiber optic cable, figured it out, like, back then. And the, the technology has come so far, but you can't make a hair-width strand of glass any tougher. It just, Dude, just well, don't work. What they like, did was they, they uh, then oh. changed the way that rigs um, kind of worked. So all those com, uh, all those com tra uh, cables got put onto grasshoppers – and trays that would automatically extend oh that makes sense and so the run of cable that you would have that would actually have to be disconnected or, or rolled up somewhere would be shortened down to almost nothing to where you just plug it in you have you have a, a, a arm that extends up connects to a building and then you go back there and connect up all the wires but it, uh, you know but why were they using like this is why were they using fiber over just like high speed copper like gigabit ether because like uh, maybe it didn't exist you, you can make it all well man that's probably it that's probably it they, time, they might be using line. that now i don't know like just because copper's tougher it's more resilient um i mean unless they needed the throughput maybe they were just pushing so much uh but i can't imagine on those old ass rigs that they were pushing well this that ain't much. old this oh, is okay. these are the ones that they built in 2000 i, I bet you they started building them in 2004 um, well, no. I worked on my first one in two thousand three. Where's the signal coming from? Is it all above ground, or do they have stuff down in the hole that's actually sending a signal? No, nothing in the hole. Oh, okay. Like so, so the communication in the hole of a of an oil well is done through, um, I guess, like the best way to describe it is like, um, what is it? Morse code? Da ding ding ding, da ding 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 ding. Yeah, ding. Morse code. Da ding 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 ding. That's uh. It's the best way to describe it. So if you have an MWD in the hole and, and it's going to relay information back to the top. Weapon of, no, it's not a weapon. MWD. I got you. Movie watching dude. I don't know what it stands for, but um, measurement while drilling. Yeah. MWD measurement while drilling. So if you have that, it's, it's in the hole. It vibrates at a certain. So it's picking up the resonance on it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a sensor on the surface. So right. pumps pumping and it just, picks up that noise and decodes it into oh this is where it says we're at that makes sense so it is gonna it never made sense to me i mean it does but but it gives you longitude latitude and and inclination not longitude latitude it give you it would give you uh it'd give you azimuth and inclination Dude, i can't even imagine being smart enough to work out the math behind that what's well, trig so I'm sure like but so, no, i'm not talking about that math i'm talking about the math of the resonance of that bit digging through the earth and how it changes through different strata, whatever that is. You're, you're not different, you're, different. These $20 words ain't different types of rock, nope, different types of that's soil. That's not what it's telling them. That's, that's, that's not what it's measuring. It, that, that's, that's that, it. That changes the resonance of that bit though. Yes, Somebody but, had to do that math to change that and send that signal back no, up no, no, and no, decode no. it. That's not what, that's not what, that's not what the measurement while drilling is there to measure. So they have gamma that, that will, I don't know how they get that signal back, but it's it. The gamma will tell you how porous the formation is, and it, it's just an indicator. It's just a number. I don't even remember what scale the number was on. I don't remember if it was one through ten or one through a thousand. I don't remember anything about gamma because it never meant anything to me. You know what I mean? Ne like people that watch gamma, it's like whatever. 
we have a well plan. So you think of think of uh, like like this is a horizontal well. Like right. this is one well. This is one well. This is one well. This is one well. And we're on the surface. These wells are going to be very close together. Right. But but down in the hole, they're going to be five hundred foot apart. So we would do kickbacks because you would you would want to. The state of Texas would say, okay, you can produce 50 feet or 50 yards or whatever it is from a lease line, right? So you would drill into somebody else's lease and then build your curve to where your production section would fall right on where you could legally produce from, okay? And that would be the horizontal section. So you'd be trying to land the curve there. So it's this big trig problem where you're drilling the tangent over to here and then you're drilling a curve to drill a well out this way. And the measurement that you would get, the inclination and the the azimuth, which is, you know, I mean, you know what azimuth is, mm-hmm. 360 or I guess 359, and then it's back to zero. I don't know. I don't know. It's zero and 360 are the same. But either way, you would take the inclination, and that would, and then, you know, you'd only get it 90 foot at a time. And they would plot it, and they would say, okay, you're here. This is where you're at in the middle of the earth okay now you're going to start building your curve and we're going to land it at 91 degrees because we're going to be drilling up one degrees you're going to be landed when you're at 91 degrees um but is all that coming back through the stem through the pipe yes through the vibration it it just when you turn the pumps on it would it would tell it now they do have some that would tell you live exactly where you're at live but there's still a delay because it's still got to work its way from and the bit is typically 60 foot behind the sensor. So the bit's still 60 foot ahead. So you've got all these projections. The On the end, you'd have a mud motor. So the, the it would have a little, like a little dog leg. And, you know, a 183 is typically what you use to, to drill. Uh, so it's got a, a 1.83 dog leg degrees, right? Um, and in the curve, sometimes you'd use a three degree motor if you're being extreme, but most of the time, um, two and a quarter, two and a half, somewhere in there would be plenty enough to build your curve. And so you just lay it on its side and, and you would, it would, oh, and the, the, something else is pumped up is the tool face. It'll tell you which direction the bit is facing. Okay. So your little dog leg would be pointing whenever you're not rotating the pipe, it would tell you which way it's pointing. So whenever you can, you can slide, you can slide it directionally. This has been a really long explanation of drilling, but also from somebody that hasn't been in the industry for seven years, so I'm sure we get fucking murdered in the comment well, section. What I was thinking, like, if you went back just in seven years, like if you went back now, how many generational changes of progress have happened in that equipment? It's got to be a couple. Oh, no, yeah. The, the equipment's probably ten times better today because, well... And, and you might, you might be that old guy that was out there like, I had to do this the hard way on junk iron. Like, this you is could true. be that guy. But there's also no money for new technology. Everything got real lean. Oil was oil was thirty, forty, fifty dollars a barrel forever. Yeah, I so get, they I mean, didn't. I they that, didn't. They didn't. They didn't spend money on. But on y'all didn't. Did, were you there when they had robot rigs? Like you know. I'm just telling you, they didn't spend money on R and D. I got in it. the last seven years, whatever technology they were on the cusp of getting out to the field, some of those projects even got killed. You no, know what I mean? No, they I'm, were like, oh no, we're not. We're not going to waste any. I was in government contract. I know all about contracts getting murdered. So so maybe the technology hasn't came much further just the stuff that i haven't seen but i don't know i don't know if i could walk I up there think, and still do it or not I, oh i'm sure you could do it you'd it would probably be easier now you'd be like what about this and they're like no nah, the machine does that over there and you'd be like holy shit i don't uh, i don't know if it's gotten that far <clears throat> but i mean it ha- I, I would think like i'm not trying to take it away from this subject but i would just all the stuff that i've been seeing lately like robotic lawnmowers like these the, that landscapers are picking up they're ordering these things track lawnmowers they just Drive back and forth up a hill with a with what, a PlayStation controller. What they've probably done, and this is just because of the technology. The technology was already there. The technology was there whenever I was there. They just didn't trust the technology enough to use it. You still measure the pipe, the pipe that tells you how deep you are. You still measure it with a measuring tape. Right, that makes sense. You're counting by joints. Yeah, but you measure every joint of pipe as it goes in. Really? Are they that different? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you measure it with a measuring tape. They don't have like like me and Jacob. Why would they Mar- just standardize the links and count joints? 
Well, because you, 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 all those joints of pipe get worked on. Oh, I got you. So if you got to cut a tool joint or do something, it's just going to be a different link. So anyways, mine and Jacob's first business idea was using lasers to measure the pipe. Not the drilling string, but the casing. No, I get it. So, and then using some sort of uh, um, sonic measure, something that you, you put an echo in, and it tells you exactly how long it is. And the only thing you'd have to take off is the link for the threads. And the link for the threads is standard. So it would be like, it would take a job that takes 10 hours um, to do down to if, an hour. If somebody overthreads on one of those, do they just junk the whole stem or cut it off and re rethread? Uh, this is casing. This is production string. So there's no, like you. like you just screw it up to whatever torque. Um, some of them have uh, a torque and like um, two little <laughs> like indicators that line up. So you you turn it. And it torques up right there whenever it's at those two indicators um, on those big, bougie, expensive threads of pipe. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that, was, that was our first idea because I was like, man, you know, the, big, the shit part of a, a company man's job, and the company man is the guy that gets to hire the person that measures the pipe, is having to go out and physically stand there. Double check. No, no, not double check. While they're measuring, you're measuring because it's your job. When you land a string of casing, you got to land it. In a manner that the wellhead, like so, you got a thirty-foot tall rig floor. You got a forty-five foot joint of pipe. You can't have a collar of pipe in that wellhead. You end up with a collar of pipe in that wellhead. You can't set the slips, right? So you've got to space it out. Whether it's pony joints, pony uh, 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 use a short joint, use a pup joint. I get you. you How gotta, long is the wellhead? Well, the wellhead might be five foot down in the cellar. You got a thirty-foot rig floor, so maybe it's thirty-five foot from the rig floor to the cellar, you got a 45 foot joint of pipe. I'm using a pup joint at that point. Like I'm going to have that collar is going to land and you, you can't land the casing to where you can't get the cement head on. So it's 60 foot in the air, or 40 right. foot in the air. Cause now you got a guy up there trying to put a cement head on and you're pumping cement all out there. So you got to drill the hole to the right depth. You got to measure the pipe that you pull out of the hole to make sure it's the right depth. So you measured it going in, you measure it coming out. And then your, your string of pipe, your string of casing has to be measured just so, so. And then the biggest part of your job at that point in time as a company man is taking your little short joints of casing that you got out there and saying, okay, we're going to throw this one in at number three. Like I always did it at so the beginning of the string. Up. So everything lands out correctly. And we should land 10 foot off the rig floor. No, 10 foot would be bad on a 35 foot, a 35 foot, um, <clears throat> wellhead so you know i want to land i want to land so, at the rig floor um so just so i understand what you're saying so you, when y'all when you, I, I i've seen the drill bits they're using down there or, we're or whatever the, we're after this is over no but I, i'm just making sure i understand so you drill with stem and then you pull all of that back out and then send casing down mm -hmm. and there is it, what's at the bottom end of that uh just a a plug of some sort like a, a, a nothing a check valve a check valve just Something How, that don't allow fluid to come in, but allows fluid to go out. What, oh, because you're pumping stuff down to get the well. As up. you run the casing in, if fluid could come out, it would just shoot over the top of it as you're. I got that. Running in. But how do you get the plug out once it's done? Uh, they go in with a, a cool tubing, it, but actually they don't need to. Th that plug's probably irrelevant because they're going to go down and perforate the pipe. They're going to shoot holes in the side of that, that production case. And then so that that's how the gas flows in or oil flows yeah. in. It, sh it flows in from the top. Is it the pressure of the, the earth pushing that stuff up that's getting no, it out the top? No, that's what fracking is. So fracking, yes, yes. I mean, I understand how they frack. They shoot out they shoot out water and sand, right, and then wedges the earth open, mm -hmm. basically, so it can flow back. It flows back. But once you've got that flowing into the tube, is there a pump at the bottom pushing that stuff up? No. Um, they'll, they'll put in a swab. You see, the, you see the pump jacks? Right. That's just a swab that goes one way. Right. So, so it's at the bottom, just like an old. Um, probably not at the bottom. Okay, but it's creating suction, basically. It's creating suction, okay. but it might that be at the sense. bottom. I don't. So I don't know. They'll, they'll probably move it around. Just like a windmill or anything else. Yes, like an it, old windmill, like putting so water in your trough. At the at the point you have to artificially <clears throat> lift, um, there's a, there's a few different ways. On the older wells, when they would artificially lift, so it's a vertical well, they would do what's called water flooding. They would flood water into the formation. So the wells flow naturally, all it's going to flow. So they would water flood that formation, and then they would pump that back out of the hole. So they would water flood it, and then it would run back in, and it would have oil and water, and they would separate it at the surface. Okay. 
Um, then they went to they they started doing artificial lift, which basically is oil is still flowing into the. So you got a uh, it's like a water well, you know. And a water well, when the pump kicks on, you know what? It's not pumping water from in the formation. It's pumping water from out of the casing. Right. So if you've got a larger casing in the water well, it holds a higher volume of water. It pumps it out, and then if you've got you know a very sandy or porous water formation, it fills back up a lot faster. If you've got something tight like a like a rock or or something like that, then it's going to fill up slower. So you got to have a bigger casing, so you have a bigger reserve of water to pump gotcha. from. Same thing with oil. Um, after they do the initial frack, once they decide to put an artificial lift on it, I would guess it would have to be above the perforation. I wouldn't think, I wouldn't think you could swab below it. Because if you were swabbing it below out? it, it would just it would just go back out into the formation further down. But as it as it fills up that casing, then it then it pumps it out. So you'll see those pump jacks run for I mean, it has an to be hour. Above, it has to be above the or below the table of whatever that that yeah, yeah. that hydraulic static pressure would be. Yeah. So they they, they would they, it swabs for an hour, two hours, and then it breathes, gotcha. comes back in, then it swabs for an hour, two hour, whatever. Hmm. Um, so that's why pump jacks aren't just sitting out there steadily running because I didn't know that. they're just drop up and they're, you know, they'll let, let some, some flow back in. Now, this is also me talking a lot out my ass cause I've never done production on the side. I just, I asked enough questions for people who did to understand what's going on. Um, what do you yeah, think about all this production? Just ran it's a lot. Did, did, did you, you didn't think <sighs> you didn't, you didn't know my skill set was so deep on, uh, in the oil field. I didn't know that it wasn't. I just, you never cared. Yeah, that's, a, that's that's. But a, it is interesting that what that we can go drill oil well if we need to. Yeah, <laughs> and we can do but it. You know all these things. I yeah, mean, I'm, we gonna, can, I'm gonna get him out there doing electrical work. We're gonna get him out there. I stretched out on a dude, lift all day running running pipe. When I was when I was tool pusher, I worked with a lot of electricians, and I never could get good at it. I, I I've well, seen some stuff that I was like I understood it when once we found it I was like oh I understand why that was fucked up so I mean that's man, that's so because y'all like that's a whole different type of electrical too because it's kind of static it's kind of not y'all are put you're putting it up tearing it down putting it up tearing it down we have been constantly SCR house do you know what SCR no. stands for I don't either so but I don't know shit about like my dad loves he still does oil and gas stuff he loves industrial electrical I don't I like commercial. Yeah, this I is, love commercial work. I like hospitals, big buildings, and I, I just don't like industrial. That's not my thing. So we'd have we had these big breakers. Um you know, it, I guess it's three bus bars that mm-hmm. would come in. Yeah. Giant. Like You ever heard those buck? No, but but this one time we had a problem. That'll make your butt open. And uh and the problem was we couldn't kill the electrical to this one phase. Yeah. That's this, the problem. This one phase, we killed the breakers, but one phase was still somehow getting power. Well, and I mean, it was the Your fu- switch wasn't working, or your fuse wasn't. Well, it was something different. So, but I mean, your breaker wouldn't work. That's it. You had to have a bad breaker. No, nah, we took that breaker all the way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, good, it's a good one. It's a good one. So, I mean, I would like to have troubleshot that. Like, I got to go. Well, we had to take the, the whole. We, we ended up, I mean, we ended up having to kill the power to the generators because we could not, we could not well, figure out why. I mean, we could not get power to stop going to this one deal. And um, I mean, you just close breakers, close breakers, close breakers. You got everything off. Was it, I mean, you you might have had something back feeding through the neutral, through a piece of equipment. Well, we we it's coming back the other side. We ended up killing all the generators. Had a then bad we, piece of equipment. Then after we killed the generators, we took the wall off, and there was one. I mean, it was a six hundred volt. You know, it was a it was a six hundred volt volt leg, had broken off. And was hanging down, touching one of those bus bars. That's fucking sexy. And you know, it's just it like welded itself to it. Really, <clears throat> it, it it hit and arced and welded itself to it. And so we're like, oh yeah. And but you know how we found it? We killed the breaker. This this is a great story. You're gonna love this. And we were going to cut the uh, cut that cut that that 600 volt off the pump. We're changing out a traction motor. Anyways, he goes to cut it off. Pop the whole head off that thing. No, no, it was it was this uh, it was this it was like the lead electrician or whatever for the company. Anyways, he's got these these and the cutters are made to take some electricity. They're not. No, so, so it's just so got the rubber handles. The, the handles are, but you have different voltage level of handles. Yeah, for, yeah, for, yeah. Well, these 
I but mean, ain't nothing. You know, I mean, nothing's gonna take that kind of opacity. That 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 metal head's just gonna evaporate. Dude, it's the greatest quote. I mean, it just freaking melts, disappears. He, so he he's it's like a ratchet cutter. So he's like, tick, 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 and it's you know closing around this giant like twelve hundred dollar cutter. Tick, 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 tick. Pow, <laughs> gone. Yeah. Anyways, it didn't. It didn't. It did not dismember him. Somehow, dude, I dimmed the lights on a seventeen-story building in Fort Worth when I was younger, and I'm still happy I didn't die in that it, incident. Normally, whenever that happens, at like wherever your body is touching that goes to ground, well, they, but it didn't. It could. It can explode that head if it's phase to phase, and I, I don't know what would the setup was. Well, the, it, the head itself could have touched metal somewhere, and it popped through the head and not gone through him. It didn't go through him. Right. It didn't. It it it, it blew. Well, a lot of times, like the the soles on your shoes help if it's low voltage. I don't know what voltage y'all are. Six hundred. Oh yeah, that's, that's hurtful. It, yeah, I've, it, it's I've only normal. been hit by four eighty. Four eighty sucks. I, I've only been hit once. It normally, but, anyways. But it, after it blew up, <laughs> we're all standing there. We're like, oh shit, what the fuck? And we're like, he goes, yeah, that's why you got to remember lockout tag out, guys, because because what what will <clears throat> hurt me might kill you. <laughs> We're like, this dude thinks that, he's invincible. That's what fucked me up. We were doing switch gear, switch over, and they had this, it was in a basement in downtown Fort Worth. It was about the size of this room. It was like 11 by 9 on the inside of that, and it was just raw bust. The, the, the way they, they turned the lights on in there was they just walked into an old ceramic fixture and turned the bulb, and it was tapped into a hot bus and a neutral bus. Like 2,000 amp bus, just four-inch bus wrapping around this, and, and there was no guards. You're just standing in all this copper. It's you, crazy. Do you understand what that means, Braxton? Mm -mm. None of it. Like so, so that pallet right there, mm -hmm. one of those rungs, just just hot with two thousand volts of electricity. Two thousand amps. Yeah, two thousand amps. Like okay. turning into a grease spot on the floor, kind of uh -huh. like non recognizable smoke with, um, with light fixtures bolted to it. That whenever you screwed the light bulb in, would no, touch. it was bolted to the frame, and they just looped a wire into it. So it was a little safer than that. But you just walked in this door, this metal door. You open it up and walked into an open. They don't make stuff like that for a reason. But also, that gear ran for like 80 years untouched or whatever it was. It was just... So, we were throwing this big alligator switch one day when we were doing a jump. We were jumping over to the new gear, and I had my helper. I said, hey, did you check them phases? Oh, yeah, check them. It's my, this is the last time I ever let anybody check phases for me. I got it. All the phases are good. And he had, he had flipped phase to phase. He'd bucked a phase. And when I threw that alligator switch, I saw the lights go down in that basement. And I'm like, fuck. And I pulled it open. I've still got the blades at the house where they started welding together. These big old four-inch by one-inch copper blades. Um, I've never let go of those things. They're in a bag sitting right outside my office right now because that was the day I didn't get killed. We haven't let Braxton say two words. Um, We've just been schooling him on oil field and electrical. Braxton, like, what, 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 what how was, not uh, to get murdered. What, what, yeah. Are you going to go get you one of these blue-collar jobs? I will. I've I've told Jason before if uh, I guess there just really had been a great opportunity, but now we can we can get his hands roughed up some like I'll uh, I, I hate working I, I would want to learn yeah just I, get exposed to it I feel like we all just need to go hire Maybe out they, on drilling rig just some <laughs> you know what I think I just realized I'll do it. I hate doing I hate doing no I don't want to do that I hate doing industrial work because you got to run rigid all the time I just hate running rigid it's just I, a pain in the ass I hate running rigid too I uh, I worked for an electrical contractor for six months after i got kicked out of high school for still on a bus sucks. as soon as they knew i could bend one inch rigid Ugh. from a schematic that's all i did oh so you were a manual bender i was a manual bender and i mean like yeah like like, like chicago bender like it had yep. wheels no no just oh that sucks just been in doing offsets around um so you're on the you're on a literally a one and a quarter inch bender it's a one and a quarter inch emt bender it's got this little step you have to jump up and bend it start it and then flip it down again and then and start again and yeah. you'll see the little guy on the job. There's always a little dude bouncing on it. Like, he just don't have enough physical ass That's to me. move that. That was me. But as soon as they, they realized, you know, hey, this guy can run a uh, measuring tape, and he can get them around an I-beam. You know what I mean? He can do an offset to be able to connect the two pieces together. Like, that's it. That, that was that was all. They're like, they're like, yeah, you know, he can. he's not going to tear up a bunch of – he's not going to cut up a bunch of rigid pipe that we'll never be able to use again. He's competent enough to do this. They just send me a head of electricians, and I would do one inch rigid runs. I'd, I, I would get out there with whoever the whoever mm. the dick head dick cheese was over that job, and he'd say, "Yeah, you're gonna run it along right there. It's gonna, you know, it's for instrumentation for this overhead crane over here. Yada yada yada. You're gonna run it down here. There's a control box. 
Yeah. And it gets really soggy when you're running rigid and it's explosion proof on whatever job he's in. Because then you got to go, you got all these check joints where you got to pack all this putty in and make sure no air can get around it. So if fire gets in that line, it can't make it through to the other side. I hate, I just hated doing all but that shit. I, one of the cool things I got, to, I got to work in a glass factory in Corsicana and a steel mill in Jewett. I got to work in the new core steel mill. Did and you do any shutdowns? No, I, I just got to go into those facilities. So I got to watch molten steel come by on this overhead crane all day. I'd have to come down the ladder, do my bend, you know, do my measuring, come down, do my bend, go up, realize, you know, it ain't quite right, go back down, fix it, run back up, put mm. it up, move my ladder down, you, go back up. And it's like a 20 foot ladder. Yeah, so did I'm you going, have a harness? No. No, I did. I had a harness because I fell and that, my harness actually caught me. And they had this weird insulation off the side of the, um, on the side of this building. And I, when I hit the side of the building, it just rained all over the place. Oh. And, you rock know, this wool. one of they the guys. Sprayed on. <laughs> sprayed on rock wool? Yeah. Like, one of the guys in the steel mill. <laughs> he just, right. I'm just hanging there off had. this fucking harness like, what the fuck? And he goes, are you going to be able to get back up or am I going to have to come up that ladder? And I was like, hell, I don't know. I've never been dangling on the side of a building. But had a bunch of little um, self-tapping screws through the side of it you know it's like damn i'm glad i didn't hit one of them but either way i climbed back up there and went back to work but yeah watching that molten steel come by all day and i don't know how they were getting it into liquid state but it was hot as hell in there Bro, and it would come you, by did you see my uncle's leg uh-huh. where he got caught in that well he had a blowout in the bar mill it piled up all around him he's my size mm-hmm. he's got these re- I'm, I'm i didn't realize it until i didn't see him until after it healed because i was out in new mexico and he's just got perfect rebar laid in all over his legs where it scarred him up. They, there was some dude that just happened to be they like tiny or whatever they called him. He was big <laughs> enough. He just walked out and grabbed my uncle by the shoulders and pulled him out and carried him out of the mill. Really? And they took him to Parkland over here. Yeah, and he's got branded. He's fine. He just branded all over his legs from where that rebar pile shot out. Because when it kinks in there, it's running through it miles an hour. And it kinks and just, poof, just blows out well, everywhere. They, they had some electrical deal that they lowered down into these vats <clears throat> yeah. i don't know how it worked yeah, I, they, didn't, I didn't get to see it put a crucible down in there and pull it out and then they pour the slag off and then they dump it out and start running metal like it, it if you all the i'm not gonna name the steel mill because we all work there although it's not what it was anymore like everybody in my family worked there the one in middle of the end oh uh, well it used to be chaparral don't matter we all worked there at some point um i i just i enjoyed getting to see that i just enjoyed like damn this is you know they talk about recycling um, oh, yeah. they, they, they're somewhere on the other side of wherever this raw material is coming in. Cause it comes in on like a conveyor belt. You just hear it falling all day. So it's getting, it's getting crushed. So they like, say they take a whole car. Oh, they're they, dropping got, they it. got a shredder out there. Yeah. They're dropping it into something. So the rubber, the, the seats, and everything, everything separated. is on this, on this conveyor belt that then gets melted into molten steel in the slag well, that but comes off the seen top. It, so they've gotten so good at that now. Like, because I, I can't tell you how many thou- tens of thousands of pounds of scrap wire I've scrapped in my life. Now they they palletize that stuff without even, the small stuff without even uh, stripping it. They just send it down to like San Antonio to these big, big recycler plants where they got machines they'll chop it up so fine they run it across like a water slab and that water separates the plastics off of the copper uh, and then they're separating it mechanically but yeah. without human intervention anymore well that and yeah it's it's incredible the uh, at how quickly or how, how much better that's gotten and when they it, talk about the green new deal your generation braxton y'all worried about the environment I, yeah i mean i don't actually know how the machine works i just know they use separate yeah what do you, like th- this will be a good segue so you've been to the dump oh mm-hmm. how's it look times. out there not very good. Isn't it wild? Ketchup packets for some people. Hey, bro. Like, I was pissed, though, because, like, <laughs> I love that new Whataburger, like, the, the super hot one, the number two. Mm-hmm. Have you had that ketchup? Mm-hmm. Number two, it's like Tabasco. Super good. You didn't eat that trash. Well, whatever. Yeah, I, I really don't. I don't, I don't eat um, fast food. I know I'm fat, but I just don't. Yeah. Either way, I stepped out of my truck in the whole area the size of many, many cars was all ketchup packets. <laughs> and I was falling all over the place. The dump truck next to me was stuck. Turns out when your wheels are covered in ketchup, you can't go nowhere. Like, Well, the the so what do you think of the dump? I mean, it's a massive it amount of shit. Yeah, a lot. Being dumped at a high rate. Mm-hmm. They just kind of push around, pile more on. 
I mean, have you seen the beginning part? Have you seen how they come in and they strip that down? I don't know how deep of a hole they dig. I don't know if it's 50, 60, 100. I don't know. Just that water holding hole they got out there is well, it, crazy. It, start, it starts off that deep. I don't know if they dig down into the water table or right above the top of it. I don't know. But that's also such a big mountain that shouldn't be there. You don't know where it actually starts at. No, no. It, 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 they do dig a hole. <clears throat> oh, I believe that. I'm just saying, like, it's hard to tell in perspective when you're on top of yeah. it where the actual yeah. thing mm-hmm. started. Because well, they, they, they keep... dig a hole and they line it with plastic. And then they, they put some dirt in there, and then they dig a hole, and, and then they put some more plastic down, and then they put some more dirt, and then you put your trash in. Um, so it's got however many layers of plastic. I don't know what actually how many layers. I just know that's how the hole is. I've seen it in Corsicana. I've seen them. Um, them, like, starting out the. Yeah, starting out. And anyways, then you just back up to the edge, and you dump down in there, and then they stack it up. I don't know if they stack it up level with Mother Earth or if they keep going. I think they, they push them all that dirt off and then they layer it because you know they put those uh, big PVC columns in too to let the gas out to let the gas out. But they but they keep bringing more dirt in. Like you know it's got it's like trash, dirt, trash, right. dirt. But it's really dirt and trash mixed together at that point because when those big skid loaders are bringing um, bringing that dirt back, it's like what was it like? Then, in those wheel loaders with those big steel. And steel they, drum things on them they just tear up everything they tear up everything but they they got like <clears throat> scrapers and um dump trucks bringing dirt up there and what, you you get there at different times of the day you get to see different phases of it but i was like man if they really cared about the environment if your generation really cared about the environment they would try to figure out how to not have landfills you know like what goes into a landfill that could be recycled what mm-hmm. do you think it's like all the water bottles like what we talked about the other day fucking plastic and, and i think that's kind of the thing it's like it's the the theory of one you know like you start with one thing like we're no longer going to put that out there how much of a difference did that make well they did away with plastic straws for the entire united states because they said they're ending up in the pacific ocean yeah killing turtles they're killing turtles somewhere mm-hmm. but i'm thinking how they ever get there seems to me it's like an isolated problem if i'm drinking on a deck my straw goes in the ocean. Well, I mean, you see, like, all that trash in the great, what is the Pacific garbage patch? But don't, just isn't China up, but, just mm, dumping their trash in the ocean? I don't, somebody's doing it. it I mean, wh- whatever co- country it is or whatever ship it is, it's just out there throwing their shit overboard. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff lost at sea, but, uh, there, mm-hmm. I mean. No, I mean, I think for years, ships just threw their trash overboard. No, I know. Like, and, 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 but but there's also like it out a million containers that don't make it here from China. <laughs> That's so crazy. Just I mean, container like floating out there. In the they're ocean. just they're just out there somewhere, um, with you know consumer goods in them. So this is That's where your IKEA furniture's at, buddy. It's this is this around. is the 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 trash um, that somebody put in the ocean, and it could be and it could be. Um, well, and they, this is creating all different problem, right? Because it breaks down. It's got microplastics now floating in the water column down. Oh there. yeah, no, no, it's it's a terrible <laughs> problem, and it's plastics. And do you know where you can recycle plastic at? Do you have a clue? If you wanted to do it, if you wanted to be a good Samaritan, where could you take it? Every once in a while, you'll see a blue trash can. Yeah, the, that's <laughs> yeah, but that's well, but like in where I live, if you're in the city limits and you get that, you have to pay extra to have that trash can. Really, it's not part of the service. Like it's like you, if you want the recycling tub, you had to have it. But where can you take your plastic? Where can you take that bottle today? Like I know where I can recycle metal at. Mm-hmm. That's why I crack well, there's nowhere to convert st- that into money. Well, you don't even. It, it'll say on here. No, that's what would solve the problem. If you no, could convert says, that into money somewhere, it, it says, says right recycle. here where you can where you can convert it into water uh, into money. Where's that? You can get a nickel on it right here in states that do that. Yes, Oregon. Only- hold on, hold on. Oregon, ten cents. Connecticut, Hawaii, um, ME, Maine, Maine. Okay, New York, five cents. California, CRV. What's CRV? Cost replacement value. What, what uh, cash CRV refundable mean? value. Cash refundable value. Wow. So it's My- a refund. The the five cents isn't. It's not a payment. It's a refund on. You're basically renting it like a California redemption value. Five cents for containers, that's 24 ounces. Man, cents we are all talking of our ass. Inside. This is fun. We're just guessing our way through this. No, but I it, like it. You it get says the right here, and this is made with 100% recycled plastic. Have you noticed that every water bottle now is made with 100% recycled plastic? 
Chucky Norris, 100% recycled plastic, woman-owned business. This is this is an amazing stat considering the youngest person here whose generation is concerned about the planet doesn't know where he can recycle a water bottle. Well, and look, I've seen it before where I've taken the time to take like boxes or something out to a recycle point, uh, like where I used to live, and they didn't actually have anything to do with it, so they were just pushing it into the pile with the trash. <laughs> like you're showing up after you've done all this work, and they're just pushing it into the uh, the big pit to load in with all the other trash. So, so plastics. You talk about hydrocarbons. You want to you want to lower your use of hydrocarbons, lower the amount of plastic that has to be made from acetyl propylene or whatever it is, because there, there there's a big plant. I in, mean that tells you the mix. I can't read it. It'll no, tell no, no, you on but there. but but uh, the hydrocarbon. They, they took natural gas. They took a plant in, in Pittsburgh, and they extract, they change it into um, material that they can make plastic bottles with and, and, or, or any plastic with. And that's never going to end. You can buy a Tesla right now. You can buy a Tesla right now. Now, while they did quit putting in real leather so no cow will have to die, it will still have a lot of petroleum involved in its... I prefer llama leather. Like, I don't care what llama leather. Llama llamas. Just- but... Really soft. How many? How much hydrocarbons are in a are in a Tesla? I don't know how much. I mean, have you seen them lithium pit, lithium pits in China? Not worried about the <laughs> lithium pits. I'm talking about just the physical mm-hmm. car that's sitting there. A ton. I mean, there's a lot and of. And what about the cost the that you can't really measure? Yeah, you can't. Like but, all the operational <laughs> costs that go into just running the very like thing Elon, that makes. If we it, asked him that. He could tell us that answer. He definitely can tell you that answer, but that's not what I'm saying. If every single human in the United States all of a sudden had the infrastructure to recycle I, dude, plastic I agree. and you didn't have to pay extra for your can. Sure. And the <clears throat> only thing you had to do within your household is have an extra trash can for for yeah. the plastics. Now, our generation, you know what our generation told us? Hmm. This is what they taught me in the first grade. I don't know, you're a little bit older than me. Go ahead. What do you think about the Amazon? What do you, you hear Amazon? What did you what do you what do you think? Well, there wasn't going to be any forest left. It was completely None. going to be gone. Burned we, down. Not burned. Burned down, cut down, de- de- deforested. He's like, burned down. They were just down there setting Well, there, I mean, there was fires forever. Like, what what was going to cause the... They were the, clearing it for cattle production or whatever else, forestry, whatever they were using down there. Poor Spoonie. He didn't get his proper liberal indoctrination. Indoctr- I guess not. It, it now, was because of paper. So when, when, we were, when we were children and we would use paper at school... Mm-hmm. The, the science books told us um, that acid rain was going to kill us. Oh, that's, that's true. The hole in the ozone layer was going to kill us. And that we weren't going to have any more rain for us because we were wasting paper. I don't remember that part, the wasting paper. But um, they, that's, they said. I mean, that, they did. But I think that was to build. I mean, we know now that was probably just to build the recycled paper industry. <laughs> I don't know if it was. I mean, I don't, I don't. I don't know anybody that's getting wealthy recycling paper. So if you know them, if we could get wealthy recycling paper, no, we I'm need not to saying that. Right I, now. But they had to justify that business. Somebody had to justify recycle business, recycle paper, or the recycle paper business save the rainforest. Maybe. <laughs> it. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't believe that we were cutting down mahogany trees, in, you know, in in the rainforest to make paper out of. I mean, that's what they were telling us. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense because you don't use the same kind of pulp wood that they were just clear cutting down there. I don't know what they were doing. I wasn't there. I was yeah. a fucking six year old. I was a six year old being shouted at about my paper usage, told, tell, being told that if my mom uses hairspray, she's going to kill us, and that if I use too much paper, I, I we're think not the acid have rain, rain was the best one. Like it was just like you're you won't be able to go outside. It's going to the rain will hurt you. Just burn like, your skin You'll have off. to run inside. Well, you didn't. You went to homeschool, so you didn't get that. I mean, yeah, you heard about acid rain, but never anything about it. Why well, really. went to that private school for the first five you years? You heard about acid one. rain? Yeah, knew what it was, but. Oh, that it existed? Yes. Huh. But then. I, they must have had some old textbooks. So I told you the other day, Zoe asked me, like, you know, what happens if there's a war? I'm like, I don't know. There's always some shit. Because, like, our parents, it was nuclear war. Like, they were worried about a nuclear holocaust. With us, it was acid rain, the ozone layer. Like, there's always some they, they, thing do, that do every realize, generation has to worry about. Do you realize how hopeless it is if you, if you, if you sit around right now and all of a sudden you got a paper straw? Yeah, which sucked, by the way. 
They do suck. You're just a They're child. Terrible. You're just a child. And all of a sudden, there's a paper straw in your life. And you don't like it. You, you know, it, it, it goes soggy. You can't no longer <laughs> suck through worst. it. You know what I mean? And now, little Braxton here is asking me, Dad, why do I got to use this bullshit-ass straw? <laughs> you know and I'm like? But, it, but what's crazy is we just don't have a better technology than a wax paper straw. No, they do. I do have them. Now. I understand a plastic straw, but there's got to be something better. Capitalism solved that real quick. You you get them now. Do you get the plastic straw that is biodegradable? Oh, okay. You get it. They made it with the quickness. They realized this wasn't the answer that fast, and they had a solution for that problem almost instantaneously. But could you imagine little little Bracky here having to explain to him like Braxton? Ask me why we don't have paper straws. Why don't we have paper straw? Because you're murdering fucking turtles, you little yeah, piece of you're shit. You're a murderer. I'm like, I'm you're poor. a murderer. I you just, do you know the reason the sea turtles haven't made a comeback? Because you wanted your little milk with the thing that popped in the top with a plastic straw. I've never thrown a straw in the ocean. No, no, no. no you did, you little piece of I've shit. I've never yeah. done it. That's, but, never but, even thought about it. But basically, that's the kind of trauma <laughs> that's just heaped on every gener- generation with <laughs> not, whatever. Not every it, generation. What generation hasn't had some kind of trauma? Uh, my dad's. They, I mean, they had the. No, you don't think dad, the Cold War stuff fucked them up? My dad, the Cold War. Yeah. You think my dad was worried about the Cold War? No, but I'm saying that whole generation. It, no, my dad came like, out of World War Two. Like I could call, I could go to your dad's house right now and be like, "Hey, there's my some dad dudes no, no, down no, here no. fighting." My on dad the corner. came like, out of World War Two. Like that generation came out of yeah, World War Two. Raised Boomers. by the greatest generation. Like raised by the greatest. Like popped out in World War Two. When the microwave yeah. New was going to be in every home, cars are going to be in every home, we're going to get bad gas miles, we're going to have V8s, mm. we're going to fucking build the interstates, so we'll be able to go anywhere in the fucking country we want to go. And then, he was a teenager during the sexual revolution, when women came off of it for the yeah. first time ever. Pre-AIDS. In the history of whatever. Pre-AIDS. 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 Pre-Jenny finding out bad things happen in Dude, Forrest Gump. It's... Like you, I ain't feeling bad for my dad. I mean, they had the Vietnam War pop in, pop in on them there for a minute. You know what I mean? That that did happen. They they fifty thousand of their of their brethren had to go over there and die, and several more had to get, you know, whatever. But they were already in their late twenties by then. You should have been a grown man working a job. You know what I mean? Like, so so you, you, you got to be a teenager during like you got to be a child during. Like, I mean, it's just such a great time to be alive. So I'm I'm Gen X. You're Gen Y. I don't know what y'all are. Next, millennials, whatever. Gen no, Z, you're not a millennial. Think, no, you're a millennial. I think it's Gen Z. Gen Z. Braxton's Gen Z. Yeah. yeah. Corey might be a millennial. Millennial. A millennial. Yeah, he's a millennial. So I'm, la- I, well, I'm like the last two years Gen of Gen X. X. But, like, I re- so I still remember, like, how big a deal, like, the world stopped when the wall fell. Like in in Germany, like we everybody was just watching that on TV. There was about no, Trump's wall. No, no, I'm talking about the East German Berlin Wall when they tore it down. The Ronald what? Reagan speech. Yeah, but what was that? What was that about? What was the wall? It separated East. It was the the treaty that we reached after World War II. Russia kept half of half of Berlin or half of Germany. Have you ever looked at the stats of? Uh, of I don't know if World it's War actually II? half. No. That's kind of amazing. <clears throat> Got into a World War II. I ended up in a World War II uh, rabbit hole. How many people from Russia died in World War II? Oh, I can't even imagine. It's in the millions are from starvation. Plus, they were just using them as cannon fodder, right? 20 million. Yeah. Just just like, hey, good luck. You don't need a gun. Just grab one off the field. Six million Jews, 20 million Russians. We're at 26 million people that passed away during World War II, and we hadn't even counted any Germans, any any. Uh, Japanese. I don't. I don't. I don't remember the rest of the stats. I just remember hearing the twenty million number for Russia. So how many people does Russia have in it right now? I don't know. It's like I think one hundred. It's in between one hundred fifty and one hundred eighty. I believe. Pull that up. See so if like you, one out of every one forty six. One forty six. How many did they have at the time when War Two kicked off? I don't know, but I, that's kind of interesting to think about. Because if they only had like say fifty million people now, or sixty million people in one out every of every other third person. person Gone about oh. 195. Oh, at that time, holy! So it fell shit. to 170. All right, these are these are the yeah these are the <clears> these <throat> are the hidden stats that that most people. So y'all have read, 
Y'all have read all these books, but have you read Ac- Accidental Superpower? No, no. You read mm-hmm. it? So this is what he goes into. So Russia's last, last chance, last chance, which Russia had a lot more land mass also in World War II. Well, they had, they that, had all those other countries. Also, just know this, we're going to break down the maps that we all see in school ain't the right map. Those countries are a lot different sizes than they are. USSR is a huge place, like huge, huge. Yeah, yeah, but 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 Russia, Russia pre, pre uh, fall of the Soviet Union oh, yeah. had Before had they, a bunch of extra countries. They're getting some new ones now. Yeah, they're going, they're going, you know, they're going back in time. They just want, they just want what's theirs, you know. But anyways, that whole situation, they 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 as a country, this is probably their last chance to be a dominant country. Um, you know, they're they're just they have an aging demography. Their replacement breeding is down. And they're just not going to be able to field enough bodies to fight a war um, in the next generation. It's just they won't be able to field a war and a workforce at the same time. So they're just kind of in this little sticky spot. And that's why the other day when they were talking about old, old Putin, you know, um, were you in there when we were talking about it or was it Shane? I don't know. Shane's a history buff. I don't I think it was me and I, you. Yeah, I, I was part of that conversation, but someone else was there. Someone else know. was there. I just, I just like I told Braxton, I'm like, there's only so much. Well, I can't say the word, but there's only so much of a JJ you can throw at a dictator before he's just like, you know what? That don't do it for me no more. Well, before it gets crazy. Well, no, no, no. I mean, yeah. it, this no, just don't I, do it for me no more. Like, like, I, like, I can, I can bang any chick I want in Russia anytime I want. I can just see yeah. one point grunt and literally, like, if not, we'll just murder, move on, whatever. That lifestyle, having that much power, right, and being able to eat any dessert. I mean, just think about the dessert. Like, if you're just Putin, you can just have any dessert you want. Like, what do you want? Dude. You can eat any any food you want. When we were... I want some food. When we were at Spiker, you could go see the pool where Uday, Uday or Huse, whichever one's kids, whichever kid that was. And he's never had Putin wealth. You know, never had Putin wealth, but he's like, you didn't swim fast enough at the Olympics, and he's just smoking people right there. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the kind of crazy you get when you have everything given to you. But what I'm saying is, it's just like now Putin's sitting there at, at with all of this. He's done ate all the food, manged all the ladies, maybe some boys, you know what I mean? Maybe some men. We don't know what all Putin's done. I don't know. He's done it all, though. And he's still, he's still like, man, it just ain't, it just ain't for me. You know what I need? I need to go down in history. He'll be forgotten about in two generations. Oh, sure. If he if he just goes out as an old man in Russia and and Russia's on the decline, you know what I mean. His his history will be erased. He'll be erased. He'll he will be a footnote. It was Shane that was in there because we were talking about the the previous Russian leaders. So who was a Russian leader whenever uh when that had the standoff with JFK? I don't know. We talked about it the other day. Was it Khrushchev? I don't I think remember. so. I don't know much about Russian history. So. Well, neither did I, but I read the book about JFK, and, and that dude was sensible. That dude, whenever it came t- time to actually <clears throat> hit the button and fire some bombs, he's like, you know what? I don't want to be known for the dude that ended the war. Or ended, ended the, the world. world. Yeah. yeah. I don't I, I don't want I don't you, want to be the person that puts in the Do you know what Matt is? Mutually assured destruction. Yeah, so they still teach about that. That's interesting. I never learned it. I thought that died with the Cold War. Well, that was the stalemate, mutually well, assured was, destruction. That's when it was taught. The, it was going over the Cold War. It's just the like, Russian, that's what we had. The Russians had so much nuclear artillery. We had so much. The deal was like, hey, if anybody hits the buttons, everybody hits the buttons. It's over. Mutually assured destruction. That was the guarantee. Like, we'll just ride out the apocalypse together. And it kept everybody from hitting the button because nobody wanted to do that. Now what's Putin looking at? What's his actual motivation? I don't know. Well, you I know. Mean, did you see his two speeches this week? They were a little crazy. Uh, no, I'm not watching. I'm not watching Putin speeches. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in on it. The only I, I am in on the psychology of what, of what Putin's thinking about. And I do. And I do think this. I mean, this is this is harsh, but it's like this is just the world we live in. Bros over there with a quasi army, old equipment, fighting around in Ukraine. There is a peaceful solution. Nobody likes it, but Elon spelled it out on Twitter the other day. Hey, let the Ukrainians vote. And let's 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 decide how the, how we end this peacefully, because while it's an outside chance that anybody gets wild enough to start hitting buttons, you know, Putin's not. 
He's not. He's not. He's not. He don't have a ten year plan on this one. This ain't a ten year plan. He's already moved his assets. That he don't give a damn about assets. No, I'm saying he's already moved his nuclear assets in place. He. I think he's crazy enough to hit the button. He probably is, but the only reason why is because he's looking at a thousand year, thousand like like if I'm the person that hit this button, my name goes on a thousand years. Do you know why you got an Achilles heel? Yeah, because of Achilles. Yeah, you've seen the movie Troy. Mm-hmm. You know, the 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 kid. You've seen the movie Troy. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Jesus Christ! But Brad Pitt says it best. I don't have I mean, a lot of time to sit around and watch a movie. You know what? I watched a movie with Brad Pitt in it the night before last, and it's amazing. That uh, some people are just that handsome. I never got that chance in life. That'll be a good clip for you. I don't think we're going to use that one. That was weird. Yeah, it's a funny movie. Either way, um, that you know, Achilles was obsessed with his name making it through Tom. At least in this movie, I don't know if he was in real life. Um, I mean, and that was it. That was all he was obsessed with. We know Troy was real, right? Was Achilles actually a real person? Yeah, he got dude. Have you not seen the movie? He got shot in his Achilles heel, but and that's he why shot we got cut. Right? He got shot with an arrow uh-huh. in the Achilles heel in the movie, just like it happened in history. I don't, I don't know about the the movie, but Achilles is a mythological figure. Troy I mean, was not, so I, they were like Troy is a real city. Yeah. I thought Achilles was a real. No, no I think Troy he's, is a think Greek he was god, and the Achilles heel. Yeah, that's the. You no, know. Troy's a real city. They found the ruins of it. Yeah, Troy is. Achilles was not. Achilles a real was person. not? No. How's he a mythological creature? Mythological figure. Well, god, but it's like the Aeneid and like, the Iliad and stuff. Like, they were mythological stories. Like god. Zeus, like. Uh, he wasn't a god, though. No, he, he was just a person. Well, he, was he was a, a he warrior. He was a mythological figure. There's yeah. no way. Homie I mean, exists. He wasn't even like a general. He was just a badass. He was just a badass like, fucking. Like they soldier. would call him up, and he like, of course, in the movie, they, he was just like, I don't even want to. I am only here to fight for me. You can go fuck yourself. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like he just wanted to fight people. But, but I, but I, I he was I, probably based on a real warrior or something. I think he, I think he's. I, I don't. I don't doubt that. that. I'm just. We saying, just hit like, the old Google button. Yeah, you got Google right in front of you. Just like, Google Achilles. Was Achilles real? Truth is that there may have. May as well have been a real Thessalian warrior, later mythologized by semi-literate people. It's it's a Homer, Homer thing. So. Yeah, it's like the Iliad, yeah. the Aeneid, yeah. any, any of those stories. So there's no proof that in that part of the wasn't the, the, that part of the Iliad or Aeneid? Yeah, I don't remember. Achilles is a big part of the Iliad. So I that think was... not the Odyssey. Whatever it is, <clears throat> in the movie, he was obsessed with being known through time, and and that's that's probably what Putin's on. Putin's on that same drug. Like, what what president stand the test of time right now, Spoon, off the top of your head? Uh, I don't think any that weren't. Well, I mean. No, name the ones that stand the test of time. Dwight, Lincoln. Who? Dwight D. Eisenhower. Name yours. Uh, Lincoln. Kinda I wouldn't have finished. Any Jefferson. other ones from founding area? Like, I don't name them. Washington, okay. Adams, Jefferson. Uh, then probably for me, Lincoln. So if they put them on a bill, you know who they are. For me, Reagan, too. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Who else? Grant, Hoover. There's a dam. There's certain things. Ho- Hoover Hoover is, is who the dam's named after? Isn't it? I don't know. You tell me. I don't I don't I don't know. I mean there's J. Edgar Hoover as well. <laughs> it's not uh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's he, he he brought to light a lot of things, but it was not a dam. Um, and then the ones that I was alive for, you know. Which ones were you alive for? I think the first Bush. Might have been second Bush. I don't know. You were alive for the first Bush. Second Bush. <laughs> yeah. I'm second Bush. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, the the first Bush was alive when I was alive. I don't know if he's president or not. I just like learning what you know about Bush. Obama. He's in there. Trump dog. Uh, Joe Biden. Our current. So I guess when I was born, it was Nixon. He was still in office when I was born. Was he? I was, yeah. And then you got Ford? I don't know. When, or whichever. Reagan. So I was born in 78. So it was. It, it was, um, no, it wasn't Nixon. There's no, no it had been Ford. Yeah, you had Ford. Ford, Ford and then, then Reagan. I mean, you had Ford, Reagan. Reagan was 84. No, you might have got some. Yeah, it was. It was. Because who I, came after Nixon? Who, who, who was his vice president? Who became president after he know. after he resigned? I was literally like one or um, whatever that was. 
But I don't I don't know who it was, but it was I, Gerald Ford, right? Hold on. I, I have Google. But Yeah, Ford assumed presidency and then Carter. Yeah, Carter, Ford, that's Carter. It. Ford Carter. Yeah, so it's Ford Carter. I mean, yeah. you might have, that's that's a pretty impressive resume of presidents. <laughs> so there's only been forty five. If you yeah. were if you're Nixon, Ford, Carter, when did um, Nixon get uh, Reagan, out Clinton, or seventy four? Okay, so he beat me out. So it would have been. Let's see. So who was in in seventy eight? Ford, Carter, 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 Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, uh, Trump, and Biden. You've got ten presidents under your lifespan. No, no, because we just said it was Carter. Oh. You didn't, so it was Carter? Yeah. Carter was the two term president? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so Carter, who, Carter was a uh, one term through 81. And then, and then you had. 80. Oh, then 82. you had Reagan. 81, Reagan then won. Reagan, then yeah, Reagan. So 82. Is that, is that still nine 86. presidents? Is that huh? 20% of presidents that she's been alive no, for? No, 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 no. There's three. There's, there's uh, two taken off of there. Oh. Eight presidents. Well, I'm hopefully get a couple more in there before I'm done. Oh yeah, I yeah, would yeah. like um, to trade out the one I got right now. <laughs> but the 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 presidents, like you, you've you've just named a bunch of them that have gone down in time. Mm-hmm. Rose, but, Teddy Roosevelt. But but well, Roosevelt is amazing president. But mm-hmm. why Crazy do you know, too. But why do you know Teddy Roosevelt? Spanish American War. That wasn't when system. he was president. That's what I remember about. I know he was president, but yeah. it's like he gave us he, the national parks while he was in office. There he you started go. that. Okay. Um, I know the other Roosevelt got shot, gave a speech or something. Uh, which one? I don't know. FDR. Yeah, yeah. He had FDR. polio. Yeah, he had polio. I, like I don't, I don't know anything about him, but it's like <laughs> I know that fact. The New Deal. Garfield got assassinated. I've you, prob- been, you probably can't even name the presidents that have been shot. I've always been fascinated by Eisenhower, just because, not that he was a great president, but just, just the sheer. I can't imagine having to make the call to send those dudes in on D Day. Like just. Uh, just, just the uh, they the weight of that decision. <laughs> what are you talking about? The weight of the decision. Did I know you know what the a, other side of the decision was? I know they didn't have a was? choice. I'm just saying, like uh, it was it was a no brainer. We're the making ba- the, no making. I'm saying he no brainer. Just bear with me. They were projecting the death tolls they were projecting for that day, and we didn't we didn't get anywhere near that. Thank God, it was still horrific. No brainer. I'm not saying it wasn't a no brainer. Just being the deuce has to sign off on that. Nope, no brainer. Easiest decision he ever made by far. He was like, we're the baddest motherfuckers on planet Earth. We got the baddest equipment on planet Earth. And I mean, they got a weak spot over there on this fucking beach, and we're going to sail right up there, and we're going to shoot some motherfucking Germans in the face, and we're going to go win this fucking war, guys. Because the other option is speaking German for the rest of our lives, and we ain't fucking doing it. Let's go kick some fucking ass. And then they went over there and did it. And then... After after they whooped all that ass in Europe, so they're kicking ass in Europe, we're out there in the Philippines and on every little pot shot island we can, and we finally got within range of of uh, of Japan, who was running out of fuel. Everybody was running out of fuel. By the way, do you know why we won World War II? Um, the Woodbine Formation in East Texas. You're welcome. You're welcome, America. The Woodbine Formation. Little guy named uh, Hunt went over and, and discovered the Woodbine Formation. Got a little Earl out of the ground, so we never we never lacked the fuel to win a war. Um, they were going the the Germans were tried to go into Russia to get some more petro. Would, they were down in Africa trying to get some petro. They were running out of fuel, and uh, and and the um, and the Japanese were running out of fuel. I mean, I'd say that's one of the reasons. There's probably a myriad of reasons we won the war, like our production abilities, the fact that we could stand up production. The fact that we're the baddest dudes on planet Earth. You know. In the 40s. The, the, the fact back that the, back, red, the Red Ball Extra- Express stood up and pushed everybody across Europe. Like, whatever, I think whatever, that was World War II. Whatever you're talking about. We're just the baddest motherfuckers oh, on planet Earth. that's true. We finally got to a, a, an island close enough that we've been out there in the desert playing hold on we've been out there in the desert playing with some german technology making glass and they said "Woo!" you can still go out there and see that hole two billion dollars memorial day and labor day two billion dollars by the way that's what that's what it costs to drop those two bombs two billion do do little's raiders billion and we were out of bombs 
We were completely out. Didn't have another one. No, they tested. They tested. Uh, they tested one Fat Man, and then rebuilt. They took the other one, Fat Man, and Little Boy, and or nope. was it? Did they fire Little Boy? At, it said, uh, "I've actually been there. You can go see it twice a year. It's pretty cool. Trinity site. Whatever you're talking about, their spoon is cool. But here's the point: we had two bombs, but Japan was convinced we had three, mm. and we were barely within range <clears throat> to be able to make it to those." Two cities and, was, and got lost on the second second mission. Almost ran out of fuel. But that was only because we had that. Was that the B twenty nine Strata Fortress? It was the brand. It was a brand new plane that allowed us to get there. And they we just, just told got the, out of production. The only thing they told the dudes were, "Here's some sunglasses, but please don't look back." And they dropped them. They exploded them two thousand foot above the ground. I did not realize that. I don't even yeah. know how they pulled that off. What's well, an out? They use an altimeter to trigger it. Whatever they did there, you know what that means? Mm-hmm. Oh. Twenty dollar words. I'll just altimeter is what tells you how how. But yeah, that wasn't a tough decision, spoon. That was that, no. They had to do that because if they if they had exploded on the ground, it wouldn't have the yield. I mean, it wouldn't have the destruction. Spoon. What? Those are all. No, now, now dropping the nuclear bomb was probably a, t- a tougher decision than D Day. You had it pretty well wrapped. Up. I don't. I don't think. I don't think he even had any idea what that thing would do. Like he was just like, "Oh, let's do it. We got nothing else going." No, nah, like, they were like, they, they were like, if we pop these bombs off, we can stop everybody in their tracks because they'll think we have a third one. They, they, the, the, the quote was, "We're going to bring sun," or, or the way the Japanese community communicated it back to the emperor was, they brought sun to the earth, and they said, and they, I think America said back, "Yeah, we got more sun if you wanted her." Something like that. You want some more sunshine? We'll bring it. We'll keep bringing it. We're going to do one of these a week until y'all tap out. Did they make y'all watch Toro, Toro, Toro when you were a kid? I don't think so. I had to watch that like every other year in school. What is Toro, Toro, Toro? It was the movie they made about about Pearl Harbor when the oh, Japanese yeah. raided Pearl Harbor. Well, and I don't even know what Japan's big goal with Pearl Harbor was. It was to devastate our fleet while it was all in port. We just happened to have not all of it there. We got lucky. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But they but, they were just but, trying I mean, to keep like, us out of immediate. They were trying to keep us from immediately responding to other actions that were going on. They were trying to make an advanced attack on us to keep us from joining the war in support of Europe. Oh well, jokes on them. Yeah, our production, dude. So there's a channel on YouTube that I just told you that that uh, timeline that that freaking series they have about how we stood up the production and worked our way out of that is incredible. Like they they built plants to build these bombers that were miles long, like just they brought in every they because they were coming out of the New Deal, so they had hated just basically hated industry and the industry didn't want to do nothing, like nobody wanted like it, capitalists were vilified, and when we got into this thing, um, they were like just bring everybody in you can. They brought in the dude that uh, I think it was either General Motors or Forge Lines, and he just started developing factories, like. Here's how you do it. And then they just started building. And it is amazing the throughput we had. And we're the baddest motherfuckers on planet Earth. And we went and we we put everybody on notice. We whooped their ass. And then we put in Brenton Woods. How how not we had an empire. We had the whole world. We had the whole world. I wish we had a historian to talk this about because I only know like I don't know the little bit I read, but it's really interesting. He knows the whole it. thing. You know Brenton Woods. What tell him about Brenton Woods? You read? I don't know. He didn't read it. Didn't I read wish my friend Chris was here. He's a big war. I never read a page of my. Uh, you read AP U.S. History book? Got a five on the exam. Never opened up the book. You you read you read accidental superpower. mm Hmm. That's where I'm getting this information from. And wasn't that the... Uh, the Brenton Woods Agreement. So that was basically, or the, the police force for the, the waterways, right? Yeah, so we had the only Navy left. So, so we got to be the top dog because we're saying, hey, y'all, we'll protect your trade. Yeah, we, hmm. so at that point in time, we could have we could have put in an agreement that said, now that we have, we have the only factories left that can produce anything and the only Navy that can protect any commerce, y'all need to all buy y'all stuff from us. But we didn't. We 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 just basically brought everybody around to keep Russia in check, even China. We brought everybody in on the deal and said, "Hey, look, we're, we'll we'll secure commerce, but uh, Stalin seems a little pissed off still. So we're gonna, you know, what I mean, we're just gonna, <laughs> gonna we're gonna keep him we're gonna keep him at bay by all of us being friends." Everything we said today seems like an oversimplification. Um, 
Yeah, we didn't but I also use $20 don't know shit alerts. about this. I don't look. We're going to get called out on the TikToks. We already know that. I don't know anything we about don't, it. We don't know anything about Santa Caputa's cow. We don't know what uh, some bull named Monkey out there. That that dude will tell you about Monkey. I wish we could find. I wish I'd have favorited it, so I could oh, go can go back, it back to, to you. Him. Oh yeah, that's right. You did send it to me. But either way, either way, um, yeah, we became the world police at that point in time. But Eisenhower, you know who you said? No, you said. Dwight was the five star in charge of everything. Yeah, but you said it was a tough, tough decision. I don't think no, it was I, a tough decision. I don't. Well, I, think, I mean, that's your opinion. I'm just saying I don't think you make that decision lightly, no matter what, when you're looking at those death tolls think, over one I, invasion. No, I think homie was like, "Bros, we're gonna die anyways. We're gonna die fighting. Hmm. Like, well, we're gonna die anyways. Let's die fighting. That's what he said. I don't know. I wish my my granddad's brother was a uh, medic at Normandy." He could have told you. I don't know. I mean, look, I don't know what the messaging was. They Back then, they had good propaganda because it only came from one place. <laughs> Would you agree or disagree? Uh, probably. I Uncle mean, Sam needs you Uncle Sam, to do your yeah. part. I mean, that was it. They had that cool voice, too. Yeah. With how slow information was, I think it's hard to really have an idea of anything that was going on. Yeah. Like, I mean, you think about it, but like, it's so funny, right? Because, like, those dudes went to war. I mean, it's not funny that those dudes went to war for freaking four or five years, never got a letter, or never never saw their family that whole time. We In Iraq this last time, everybody's on, you know, whatever, Facebook, chatting mm-hmm. back and forth. But it probably moved fast. I mean, fast enough. At least we had, like, telegraph and stuff compared to previous wars at the time. They the had telegraph was, in uh, the Civil War. Yeah, but I, or whatever. We had radio communication. We had all this stuff that we didn't have in wars before that. They probably thought we've got all this technology at the time, and it's archaic compared to what we're looking at now. Definitely, because right now, if you go to TikTok, um, you can watch the Russian Ukrainian war on TikTok. You can see. You can see more there than you can see on the news in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't expect anything less. But you can, you can. There's a dude, a Russian. Got near a phone um, in some town over there, called his wife, boo hooing. Um, and he's, you know, hey, look, this is our last call. Like, I'm calling you. I'm surrounded. Gonna die. Just happy to be on the phone with you. And this Russian lady's like, no, you're gonna turn around and go fight. Quit being a fucking, quit being scared. Go fight. Go win. Go she, win for Mother she, Russia. She 300 his ass. Like, come home on a shield or. Don't come home. Dude, she told him. Like and then then homie homie's not with us no more. Damn. He didn't he didn't make it. And uh that's pretty fast communication considering he got around the phone, made a call, and me and you can listen to it on the TikToks all within probably forty eight hours. Where back in the day they just had to tell you, Oh no, it's great over there. You're gonna see the world. You're gonna be in the Philippines. <laughs> you know, you're gonna be be doing great. Join the Navy and see the world. Yeah, that guy. Braxton, you ever thought about joining? Yeah. I'd join. Let's join. I'll do it if you yeah, do. A you have to get a waiver. He's too old. <laughs> not you have no a waiver. They they'd waiver you. No, he no, he, I think it's forty two now. You can still get in. I can still get in? I'll join if you join. You wanna go join? What branch? What what do you what branch? I won't be a marine, dude. I guarantee you the plan. We're, we're going we're going all the right way. Now. We can get y'all in today. We're we're going all the way, we're not going at all. So we go be Marines. Mm-hmm. What do we do then? I don't know. Go to the desert next? Nah, we're going to Russia. Oh, it's cold, man. What job would we do? What job would me and Braxton do? Whatever the, the recruiter needs to fill that day. That's we're what like, you'll get you ever seen do. spies like us? Yeah. 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 We'd be like those guys. <laughs> You're going to go in and be like, I want to be a race car job. And they're going to be like, that's fine. Just sign right here. We can get you in. <laughs> no, that's not what they did. Whenever I was 18, they wouldn't let me. They told me, no, you're not going to do that. That's exactly what they did. I was like, I want to be a helicopter pilot. And they're like, ah, we don't need those. Yeah. I but, never joined. Well, what would you want I to wish do? I would have. We'll just be spies like us. <laughs> what? Spies like us. Exact same thing. What's a spy like us? You ain't seen that movie? you never seen Spies Like Us with Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase? It's fantastic. No. They just go over there to just kind of, like, like what we would like be with no training CIA. just over there. They like work in the basement at the CIA and somehow – they get into the spot where they need to send two dudes to like, on a I don't suicide know, it's like Chechnya or somewhere. Yeah, they're just like almost Russia, it's like Chechnya. No, but it's like it's Soviet Union occupied. 
So they're sending them over there just as like cannon fodder. They don't want to send any good agents. And they basically work their way into a situation where they're now into a standoff with Russia. And it's basically, have you ever seen Stripes? No. That'd be You've us, never though. seen Stripes? No. What? I've seen Roadhouse. You've never seen Stripes with Bill Murray? Have you seen Roadhouse? It's a good movie. Yeah, of course I have. I'm, I'm an American. <laughs> like, if you don't, like, I don't even want to, like... Like but that's what that's we would a do. Crazy you got to see the movie, then you understand like what that, our job will be. Like just looking that cool, where you like backhand a dude and flip your hair. Like I, none of us could do that. We all wanted to be that cool. Have you seen Full Metal Jacket? Uh, yeah. Have you? Mm-mm. Damn. Seven point six, dude. You not seen Full Metal Jacket? I, I said that. Dang. See if you can pull up the um, how do you shoot little little kids and women. Oh wow! <laughs> Go right there. I mean, see see if you pull up that clip. It, I can't oh, we, do it. We justice. all know the answer. How do you, Braxton, don't. How do you do it? Yeah, yeah. You just lead them a little less. That's the clip out of the. movie. <laughs> that's a clip out of the movie. Like I mean, but that's probably. A, that's. Yeah, that's like uh, how the hell. Like it's so weird. Do you think movies? Is he getting sick? Yeah. He's getting sick just watching him. Hold on, hold on, pause it. I think we got a copyright strike last time for letting it play too long without commentary. Braxton, what do you think about it so far? Would that be you? Would you be throwing up? No, nah, I'd be on the gun. You'd I'd be, be on the gun, I'd be throwing up? Yeah. I mean this. All right, let's keep going. I don't I, like stuff like that. Don't make me sick. I mean, right. some shooting kids. A lot, most food. I uh, see. Maybe I'm not on the gun, but <laughs> yeah, most I mean, foods make me you sick. Don't want to know like the context. A helicopter like, ride. Yeah, sign me up, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They just keep going. <laughs> Joker. He's a born to kill. Born to kill. <laughs> He's a pacifist. <laughs> he is like. So he's just tearing him up over there. Get some, get some, get some. Whoa, like I don't. Yeah, I was about to say. I thought it. <laughs> yeah, it shows it. I thought it. I was about to say. So is he just doing it for fun? <laughs> like, do what? Is he just doing it for fun? What's the deal here? Um, looks like they're flying over a rice field. Anyone who runs is a BC. <laughs> Anyone who stands still is a well-disciplined BC. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, hold on, pause it. Oh, so he's press. So, so this is this is the press. Well, Joe, Joker's that dude on the left. I don't remember all their names, but he was the guy. He was a pacifist and stuff, uh, if I remember right. God, it's been. I haven't it's seen this since I was a kid. Yeah, no, you got to put it on. But I haven't, I haven't seen it in a while either. Like, yeah, so this makes me question something, right? Because we know all these quotes. Like, I can tell you all those movies I've seen from ten years and back. Ten yeah, years yeah, going yeah. back. Has all of this type of media been diminished? The cultural have woke imp- have woke bitches no killed it no nothing about woke people. I'm just saying because there's so much more information. I don't think these movies have the relevance they once did. I, I mean Kubrick films do for sure. I mean what, yeah what, but, yeah, but Kubrick ain't making new films. No, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm saying I like what? say when did when did the internet become big? Two thousand five. Any time before that. Keep rolling. We'll we'll do it. We'll look at something here in a second. Keep rolling. Do it. Fifty water bottles. <laughs> Fifty water bottles. Our children. Sometimes. How can you shoot women and children? Do it. Easy. You just don't lead them so much. <laughs> Our children. Like. What? Are, what? We're looking at something now. I don't know what they're showing us. I don't know what they're showing us either. Yeah, it don't matter. You didn't see clearly. What? Like, we all know he's shooting people. It's yeah, I, weird... don't know what... I have no idea. What... <clears throat> we don't know what he's trying to point out there, but what I can tell you about that. Um, what? All right, so so he'll pull up in uh, movies released in 1996. I saw this clip the other day. Um, 
and it really is, it really will put it into perspective how the woke mob killed killed Hollywood ability to produce. All you have to do is look at the uh, look look at this is this is uh nineteen ninety six. Dude, I still love Matilda. No, but look look at the movies. Yeah. You got Independence Day, Scream, Matilda, Fargo. Um Dude, we went and saw Scream in the theater. Happy Gilmore. The Craft from Dust Till Dawn. This is just one year. Romeo. Oh my God. A wow. Time to Kill. Train Spotting. Jesus, what a great movie. This Twister. is just one year. Mission Impossible. Well, I think in the car yesterday we heard that I, I got to double check this, but Danny Boyle's making a Matrix stage play or something. Well, then there a new, the new Matrix wasn't even made by the Wachowski brothers. It was is, like is their Matrix daughter on this or something. List? No. no, Matrix is ninety nine, but Danny Boyle made Train Spotting. Oh, Train okay. Spotting so freaking good. Mars Attacks favorite Jerry Maguire. movie of all time. Jerry Maguire. No kidding. That's a, not really, but it's this, up there. I this is movie. one year's worth of movies. Jerry Maguire. Crash. What is this? Zoom in a the little. The English bit. Patient. The Birdcage. That's um, a great movie too. Yeah. Here we go. So. Two Days in the Valley. James and the Giant Peach. Fear. Sling, Sling Blade. Blade. King Pin. King Pin. Um, strip strip tees. tees. Now, I go to 1994. Or 95. 101 Ghost Dalmatians. Barbed Jesus. Wire. Long Kiss Goodnight. Like, swingers. What a great movie. Like, But that's what I'm saying. Like Nobody knows. The, like None of us are going to the movie theater every other weekend anymore. Well, I know. But, but I don't think that has as much to do with... Because they're releasing direct to... I don't think people are watching those as much either. All I'm saying, I just don't think it has the cultural relevance. Go to 1994. Wait till you see the list for 1994. Pulp Fiction. Jeez, what a great movie. Shawshank Redemption. Both great movies. Forrest Gump. Amazing. Leon the Professional is okay. Interview Interview with the Vampire. The Lion King. True Lies. Heavenly Creatures. Legends of the Fall. The Crow, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, The Next Karate Kid, Natural Born Killers, The Little Rascals, Clerks, Speed, I don't know about Stargate, Maverick, fucking Maverick, Stargate. Ace Ventura Pet Detective, Clear and Present Danger, Four Weddings and a Funeral, Little Women, um, I don't know any of these, The Mighty Ducks, D2 The Mighty Ducks, The Flintstones, Little Giants, Nobody's Fool, Street, Street Fighter. Fighter. What a great, horrible movie. Oh, it is. It's so, so terrible. Good. So, but it's so good. It's, so it's good. like, do you remember the Beastmaster? Oh no! If, if the Beastmaster or Conan comes on, I'm Wyatt watching Earp. the whole thing. Wyatt Earp. Uh, that was a pretty good one. Airheads. That was all right. I mean, this is one year. Reality bites. I, I want you to name Angels in the Outfield. Angels in the Outfield, right there. Like, um, now, ba- uh, and name then, one movie that came out this year. I don't know. Right. That's my point. I it doesn't have talk into the out. microphone, though. Hold on. Oh, uh, Top Gun. Top Gun. Okay. Name two. Name another one. Beer could Run. It? I couldn't name the, anything the, past Maverick. Look, because the, the greatest beer run ever. But now we're in post-COVID. Post-COVID's a different deal. Okay? Post-COVID, people still haven't still haven't returned to the theaters. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're and, giving, you can get an all-you-can-go pass now for like 20 bucks. Yeah, so people still haven't returned to the theaters. So I'm not blaming them for the for the lack of capital that's in the industry right now. But go back to 2019. Name a movie from 2019. No, I don't know. Think like Avengers Endgame, maybe. Na- na- name all right. So so there was, and and this is true. Um, Wedding Crashers, good or bad movie? It's a hilarious movie. Um, the Hangover. Hilarious. Um, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Hilarious movie. These are all. I mean, think any any. Um, Billy Madison, like all, like like I can name you a thousand funny but, movies. But those that, are in the nineties. But I'm yeah. I'm naming ones that are okay. like 2006, 2007, uh, 2003 till now. Like the the way the progression would go, they would there would be stars in Saturday Night Live. They would, they would sure. be in Saturday Night Live, and then they would start making funny ass movies that were borderline offensive. At the time, at the time, yeah, yeah, borderline. Because yeah. that, that line has moved all over the place. That, that were borderline at the time that now are too offensive. They, they can't even make them. Nobody can make Blazing Saddles. Like, Blazing Saddles is a million years no, old. It was 30, 40 years but, old, but I'm but just saying. like, there's Paging just, Doctor, you don't I'm know how to finish that. Go to The Hangover, Paging Doctor. 
Oh, I don't remember that part. You, I don't well, remember that line. they say the F word. And and you've got it. You've got all these great movies with all these great lines. All this great, I mean, stuff that we quote. Like, I can quote lines out of those movies. Like, I got a stage five clinger. I got a stage five clinger. You, you hooked up with a virgin? You know? Ma, where's the meatloaf? This is the difference generation, I think, too, right? It hit him, and it hit him at the same point that all the '90s movies hit me. Like I, I, I know can, all the can, '90s movies too. I can remember every line from the '90s movies, and then like all that stuff. Well, I, I think I think a couple of different things have happened. One, um, Hollywood went; they they will no longer um, pay to have those movies produced. Well, who was the who was the comedian that uh, that just I can't think of his name. He's all over TikTok. Do the mustache. He was not getting anywhere because his, they were saying his comedy was too offensive, and he just said "fuck y'all" and started his own tours, and that dude's selling out everywhere. Look, that's fine, that's great. I'm talking about Hollywood making movies, making funny movies. But my point is, they're afraid to make something funny because they're afraid of who it'll uh, offend. I I agree. I, I I think that that had a lot to do with it. I think that people did quit going to theaters. I do think that Netflix and and the other forms of entertainment. Um, TikTok, social media, different things uh, uh, is affecting their ability to get people in the theater. But I also think that there's no, like, they're remaking. All they can do now is remake oh, an terrible. old movie. God, it's terrible. An old it's movie and remake. make it new again. You know, probably if we go back to look at the movies in 2019, the leading movie is going to be some Disney movie that they made into a um, human production. Oh, yeah. It'd be like the Lion King live action or something. Well, I mean, bring it up. Let's see what let's see what the movies from two thousand eighteen is. This, one of my favorite movies of all time, Midsummer. It's phenomenal. Ari Aster is a great director. Dude, is that the one that's like the horror movie? Midsummer. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks insane. Midsummer is phenomenal. Once upon a time, Tarantino's great. Knives Out was a really good movie, but then it's trash. I'm not. I've never heard of any of these movies. I've only seen the uh, clips the gentleman. From Midsummer. What's the gentleman? Oh, the, the Gentleman's a good movie. But but even think about like Ocean's That's a really good movie. O, 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 Ocean's oh, Parasite, 11. dude. Ocean's Eleven, the whole Ocean's trilogy. Um, well, Ghostbusters, all of them. They just remake everything. And it, like, I don't understand. Like, I got two daughters. I want to see leading ladies do stuff. But why are we just remaking shit? Like, why don't we just come up with new stories? What are you talking okay, about? Okay, Book Smart's the first, like, prominent comedy. <clears throat> and uh, that definitely fits your narrative. Does it? I mean, Book Smart. I mean,. I've never it's seen it. It's an all right movie, Olivia Wilde. It's well, think about a uh, um You definitely think it's woke well, comedy. I, I thought you were saying I thought you were saying like they're just re they they rewrote Ghostbusters with an all girl cast. They rewrote um like, No, I don't I don't know how they I don't know how they've rewrote them. I don't I all they're and then doing they went is, back to the to the old cast. They they're just remaking movies because they they they're going in on that previous, they're, they're wanting you it's and nostalgia. me. Nostalgia. They want us to show up they, with our money because we loved Ghostbusters, just like we did for Maverick too. Not you. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't seen it. But me and Braxton showed up opening day. I was supposed to go with y'all before you know, opening day. Before opening day. Yeah. And then I went back two times after that and tried to watch it the <clears> other day at the theater again, but it didn't come on until nine twenty, and I had a bedtime I had to make. Like. But I mean, like a, Ford I mean, versus Ferrari is the only. 2019 is phenomenal movie for movies. This is Jojo Rabbit, really good. I like I like but Ford versus no Ferrari. comedies for sure. Um, the Alita, Lion King Alita remade. Battle Angel was pretty decent. The Lion King remade. Um, and then the X Men, the X Men, and uh, all the Marvel movies have been made recently. And they're all, uh, you know, I don't I don't dislike them. I mean, the Transformers, all the different things, the Irishman. But that one came, went straight to Netflix, didn't it? I mean, everybody everybody knocks Michael Bay for his over-the-top Transformers, but I kind of appreciate it. It's just a ridiculous... Fighting with my family has got the same font as American Pie. I don't know if they did that on purpose. But think about American Pie in today's in today's society. Uncut Gems? I don't know what that's about. Did, did you see, oh, that's phenomenal. Jason, you got to watch that movie. Bro, I'm just coming out of having to... Two babies at the same uh -huh. time. Like at this point, I, I still bad. had multiple diapers to change every day, all day. What What do you think about? What do you think about? Uh, have you seen American Pie? Mm -mm. You never seen American you'll, Pie. You know what baby gel is like one day. So he'll. Never, never seen. Never seen, seen American Pie. Mm -mm. Dude, 
Oh my god. Well, I mean, when when I went back and watched it as an adult, like you'll never look at flutes the same way again. Oh yeah. Oh, I, there was some shocking. I, I, there was some shocking moments in that movie. That what is that are even name? still shocking today? What is that girl's name that played Natasha? Like she was in I, everything. I don't the, know. The brunette. But but that's the funny part. They did they hack in or did they set up their own camera and watch her undress? He forgot to turn it off. He was doing something and he was setting it up and like he fucked it up. And so the very first webcam in 1999 when I don't there were, I don't know who had webcams. So, so the, the hottest girl in like foreign exchange student in his planet at the time shows up at his house. She comes in and tries to hit on him because she has a crush on him, and he uh, she, just ridiculously hot girl, and he just bleh, on himself right what, there. What, what's, and it, blah, what, what's that? He prematurely. What, what word goes off? For I don't know. What, what word Threw is it? Up? No, I can't think of the name. Vomit? No. Blah, like is uh, that? that is I associate that with like. I don't remember what that word is. We're good Christian chundering. Boys, so. No, it's not about that. I just don't want that cut out there. I wanted him to say it. We don't know what you're trying to say. I getting sick. Yeah, no, I know what's going to happen with that cut. Yeah, anyway, well, what did, I don't. No one knows. No one knows. The, the he cut. nuts all over himself. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> and, and it's live cast. <laughs> it's live. It's live cast on the internet to all his friends. All his friends are watching it. Like everybody in his uh, whole school. That was such a shocking deal at the time. Oh yeah, but but she was but she was uh, topless and Blink One Eighty Two watched was it. Shannon, <laughs> what is Shannon's name? Blink One Eighty Two watched it. Do you remember that? No. Yes. Blink One Eighty Two was was part of. Oh, in what, the movie. In the movie. In the movie, it was it was it was being broadcast <clears throat> everywhere, and Blink One Eighty Two, for whatever reason, was on. You know, had it. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty uh pretty wild. I think she was topless though, so I don't know if they oh, had yeah. it on YouTube. Uh, she was in. Uh, I'm pretty sure they wrote the song "Mutt" for this movie. Yeah, definitely. But um, so yeah, American Pie made all those guys famous. I mean, Stifler. I mean, that dude would not have had a career if it wasn't for American dude, Pie. He's in a really good movie after that, where he was like his old hockey player. It's really good. And he was also wasn't he in Road Trip? Oh yeah. Did, no, did no, I no, say no. he wasn't? In, yeah, he was in Road Trip. Did I say Euro two trip fingers? Was a one. Did I did I say uh, two fingers? Better make it three. I mean, they're they're here. They're with us for forever. Would, oh my God! Would you do kill a cheetah? You know, I mean, it's, there's so much, so much there that I, I almost feel bad because, like, do you think do you think the Netflix movies compete with? Is there one Netflix no. movie that you've seen? They all seem like, like the one we watched. Like the one there was, we watched one two nights ago. It was Channing Tatum and Shan, or in, uh, oh God, what's her name, Sandra Bullock. It was a rom com and it was funny, but it was a lot of cheesy jokes. Just really, I'm not really rough. I'm not like, worried about that. Roughly I'm, cheesy. Like I mean, production quality wise. Like I mean, they're they're like all of Kevin Hart's movies that he's done with, with Netflix have, like um, I mean, him, all them. All Mark the ones Wahlberg. that uh, all the ones that uh, Adam Sandler does are pretty high quality. He does a ton with Netflix. I I agree. The the Mark Wahlberg and Kevin Hart just did a bunch. Or yeah, they, they seen they've them. done I do they've done a few. And the and they it's like the good guys. Have you <clears throat> right. you've seen That's the good right. guys? <laughs> Did you get off your office, pops? <laughs> <laughs> Braxton, know the best part about the good guys <laughs> is. To me, is still what's it? What's it? Will Smith or Will Ferrell's wife's name in that movie? Oh, Penelope Eva Mendes. Cruz? I don't yeah, know. Eva Mendes. Is yes. that Eva Mendes? Yes. Yeah. She's get it. Don't take that. <laughs> no, get it. Don't take no. He shit. has this ridiculously hot wife. I have, okay, model yes, wife. I have seen that just one. She chases of, after him. But it's all of Mark Wahlberg's mm-hmm. asides where he's like, "Wait, you just le- you learned to ballet dance to ironically make fun of people? Yes, I did. Like just all this stuff he would." Just the pettiness of That's Mark the Wahlberg. Guys. <laughs> and Samuel L. Jackson and The Rock start off and then they die. Just jump off the building for like yeah. no reason. Yeah. So that was the fun part of that movie the other night. Brad Pitt showed up for that same reason in that movie with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. He just does this great cameo well, at the front. Well, this, this I mean, so The Good Guys is a great, great movie. A good movie. They just tried to not redo it, but it was the same sort of theme with him and Kevin Hart. And the graphics were bad. They had Mark Wahlberg come out naked in his first scene in the movie, 
and they're like old best friends that hadn't seen each other in a while. But I was like, man, the the like the special effects just ain't quite. They're not quite there. They're just not quite it's like, there. They're like, it's you like, know, we'll save money here because Mark Wahlberg is naked over here. Pretty much. I mean, pretty much. Like, I mean, they they did, they did this little skydiving scene at the beginning, and it's just like, you know, it, it, it's it's got a lot of cheese on it. It's just cheesy, but it's also it's just not very just. It, it's good because it's Kevin Hart. It's good because it's makes Mark sense. Wahlberg, but it's every other aspect of it. It's bad, um, and you don't. I mean, y'all don't care about it at all. That might be mm-hmm. the difference in the generations. You just don't give a fuck about movies at all. You don't watch a movie. But you're also, we gotta, we gotta. What, so I want to ask Sohill because he's a he's a different type of connoisseur. What's the last? So like Train Spotting is one of those movies that just there's some rough scenes of Train Spotting, like just rough. Uh, like for me, Requiem for a Dream was one of those that I was just like I left. I'm like I don't. That was an amazing movie, but it's one of those movies that impacts you like at a, like at a visceral level. What, you got any of those Sohill? Um, like recent? No, anytime. Oh, Just any movie. Definitely those two. Oh, um, those. What about what about friggin' um, um, Kill Bill? Oh, that was amazing, dude. All the, you, yeah. I, I, and I didn't. Django and Chain was good, but I haven't seen all of it. I've only. Uh, I, Django and Chain was. Oh my god! Like, like, I don't like. I like Django and Chain is a movie that could not probably be made today. It, it's a really good movie. It, there's no way. But, I don't. I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio's character. I don't think you would take the part. The have, part in today's. Have you seen the commentary where they were trying to coach him through that part? <laughs> it's a. It's a. Uh, Jamie Fox. He's talking about like we had to coach him through it. He wouldn't do the part. Like. It's it's it, like, it's uh, it's pretty rough, but it's also. <clears throat> well, I can't believe. I mean, even the 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 character that Sam Jackson played in there. Is I don't. Oh, it, but it's but it's like, but I mean it's good. Sam Jackson's really, First his down. range is well. Yeah, I, mean, I mean he's he's just got a great range. We just watched me and my son just watched him be a Jedi a couple yeah, of days. Yeah, he's, uh, he's from Mace Windu. I mean he gets typecasted as say a motherfucker. I mean, but it, yeah, everybody thinks. I mean snakes, snakes on, a plane. on a plane. Yeah, but 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 like like when you like I, Pulp Fiction comes on right now. I'm watching the whole thing. Just watching it and and the Pulp Fiction story of how it came to exist and how those actors took it. Like, if you ever hear John It John rebuilt Travolta, John Travolta's career. One yeah, movie. John Travolta basically took that part for free. I mean, you don't remember. Welcome back, Cotter. Hey, Mr. Cotter. Like, that was that was early John Travolta. He was on a sitcom. And that dude's... That dude's... Uh, that. What? What was... I'm old. I, I, was, I, I, no, 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 no. I, I thought the same he, thing that you thought. He'd come would, in and yell you know, at every show. Or that's every, not what every, we're talking uh, about. <laughs> that's not what we're talking about. Oh, my what? God. But it, it don't I'm matter. Talking, you're talking, I'm talking about it rebuilding his career. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah, with yeah. you. We're, I agree. <laughs> we're here for ge- different generations, right? Yeah. That, that Mr. Carter uh, impression. <laughs> oh, it was not a good one. But were you going for gay or black? No, no, he was Vinnie Barbarino. He was an Italian dude. I could not tell. Well, it was even a good impression. Corey didn't uh, hear race. <laughs> but <laughs> did, he played a Gary, Vinnie Barbarino. Like, now that was a little better, but it, the, in the first one, I was no, like, the, 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 Hey, Mr. Cotter was a different character. I can't remember his name. It was a different character. He was coming in screaming. He basically pulled, Hey, what's the, the racist dude's name that was on uh, Jason? No, no, the racist. <laughs> that's that's nice. The racist dude's name that was on uh, Seinfeld, the the guy that with all the hair. Oh, Richard Mark. Look, no, 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 the guy with all the hair. Like yeah. he did that stand up rant. That's basically what that guy would do. In Pull, mi- see, see where we can watch him. What, what, what's, his, what's his name? I don't remember. Michael Richards. Oh, okay. Yeah, he what? played Kramer. Kramer. See, see where Michael Richards. Oh, is, that's the is live at rant. Next. See, see where he's live at next. See, see if he still does live stand up. I can't imagine he's doing it without getting run out of places. Well, this is where you're going to be wrong. Because that was... He's doing the apology tour? There he is. Tour dates. That's not him. Wow. Well. <laughs> Michael Richards went back to performing stand-up comedy after his show failed to launch... So he just doesn't do stand up anymore at all. No. 
I mean, I don't, I don't think it would be this hard to find. I mean, what's his name made it back in? Uh, Who? Louis uh, C.K. I don't think whatever. Louis C.K. ever made it out. No, he's been doing tours. I don't think he ever made it out. Like, I think whenever After you the, canceled him. I didn't cancel him. His show was really good. Like, he showed his wiener to a lady. Yeah, and, and, I, don't, and I don't think anybody ever canceled him. Oh, I think they did. They kicked him off his show. He lost his whole show over that. Yeah, but that's not the same as getting canceled. He lost a show. I don't think he ever got canceled. I just always assume Michael Richard was because comedians see the the if you watch a lot of a lot of comedy or um you know back in the day comedians only way to make it big was with a sitcom. That was the only way to make it big. Well, yeah, I mean, like was, they would like if you think about it, Tim Allen, um, uh, Full House. Every one of the guys in Full House. I mean, until John he Stamos. passed away. Yeah, uh, John Stamos was, was not, but Jerry Seinfeld. Um, what was the guy's name that used to be married to uh, Alanis Morissette? He was on Full House. Who? Joey. Uncle Joey was married to Alanis Morissette for a while. Yeah, like but but he was a comedian. Yeah, they, no. they were all stand-up Dave, comedians. Dave Portier or something? Portier, yeah. that's right, because he did America's Funniest Videos for a while. He was married to Alanis? Yeah, for like a really short time, what? if I remember right. So, so this so is Michael all... Richards was in B movies, so I think his career is fine. Yeah, he's not, he, I mean, he's not as canceled, but here's, here's an interest, here's some interesting cancel, cancel nuggets, right? Ray Rice. You know who Ray Rice is? No. All right, so Ray Rice is the most interesting person on planet Earth to me when it comes to getting canceled. The NFL had had this video of him punching his girlfriend oh, or wife or whatever she was yeah. in an elevator, gave him a two game suspension or something. Yeah. Um, and then the video gets released to the media, and he gets suspended for the rest of the season. And then they cut him, and then they never sign him again. He never gets signed again. Never. I mean, it's it's over and done with, finished. Done. But they let him finish the season. <laughs> no, they didn't let him finish oh. the season. He would have been suspended two games had they had the, the the NFL, the brass at the NFL saw the video, and they they gave him a two game suspension. The world sees the video, and dude loses his job and gets to never work again. Now, whether that's right or wrong, I have no earthly idea. But that's Ray Ross, and you can go watch yeah, the video no, on your own time video. if you want to. What about Ray Lewis? Go ahead and Google Ray Lewis. Now, now the circumstance with Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis, a boxer. Ray Lewis is also a Baltimore Rain. Ray Lewis murdered someone. If you if you go read about Ray Lewis's murder, okay, murdered someone. Here's here's how here's how this goes down. Um, and well, it and, says despite never killing anyone, despite never killing anyone. Guys, go go You're read saying. the go read read the circumstances. The circumstances of this murder is Ray Lewis is in a limo with a handful of people. When Ray Lewis is in the limo, handful of people in the limo. When Ray Lewis gets out of the limo, two people stabbed to death. <laughs> All right, who murdered them? They stabbed each other. Oh yeah, that's what happened. Mutual stabbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so. So Ray Call Lewis, of Duty, you call that Ray trading. Ray Lewis never missed a football game. He won NFL MVP or, or Super Bowl MVP the year, the year that uh, it happened, and they didn't let him go to Disneyland. Trent Dilfer went in his place. That was Ray Lewis's punishment for being in a limo where two people were stabbed while he was in there. And every this is this goes back to that don't talk to the police. Everybody just said, yeah, don't talk to the police. They got to pin this on somebody. I don't know how many people were in the limo. I don't know that specific detail. I do know this. Ray Lewis was in the limo. In when he gets out, two people dead, stabbed to death. That's what I know. Now. But there might have been 10 people in there. No. But look, it's, it's irregardless. Irregardless. is What's worse, hitting your wife or murdering two people? What's worse, hitting murder. your wife or covering up the murder of two people? Let's let's just put a fuck uh, uh, a sliding scale on it. I obviously murder. You would think. Now, where's Ray Lewis working today? Ray Rice is still 
I, I, Ray, Lott, Ray Rice might have a – might be, like, doing community outreach. He might be doing speaking. He might – I mean, hell, he might only be able to, you know, work at a factory or something. I don't really know. But what? where's Ray Lewis's uh, – um, So you, I mean, you can read about this on your on your own time, but but what, where's Ray? What, what where's Ray Lewis employed today? Will it say on there other work? He's on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Don't mess up your routine, I guess. No, I mean he 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 was on Dancing with the Stars. He's currently a a um, he currently um is on whatever NFL show. What do you think about that, Braxton? I mean, just is what it is, you know? Some things can get you canceled. Yeah. Some things can't. Some things can't. That that one's... Well, I mean, we know the difference, right? There was a video that could be on TV. That's the difference in those two. I'm not. I'm not saying either one is good. They're obviously terrible, but one had a video that went across every news media, and the other's like, well, I don't know. There's dead people in that car. They don't got a video. It's like what we said about the baseball game, you know? Reality doesn't matter. Perception does. It, it, no. It, look, no, the perception. That. Like, you, you get a video. The perception on all of that's terrible. There's there's another. Um, yeah, but wouldn't you say one's worse than the other? There's an NBA player, uh, Jason, Jason Williams, murdered his um, limo driver. Accidental misfire. Got charged with manslaughter. I think he got put on probation. Okay, that's not how that would work for you. What do you mean? No, I, th- I really think it was an accident. I, I believe it's an accident. I just don't think you have the lawyers to fight your way out into a manslaughter charge. I don't. I don't. It, it, irrelevant. I don't think he missed a game either. I don't. I don't. I don't remember him. I don't remember him being a big deal. Um, today, um, anyways, then. It, there was a that boy well, the basketball player that we talked to at the beginning that got fined forty grand for using the Q word in the LGBTQ. Uh, it, <laughs> did you see? Our, did you see our friend got kicked off Twitter because he was addressing somebody by their name in their Twitter? Their Twitter bio name wasn't offensive because that was how they identified, but he was just addressing them to ask them like a question, and because he used it, they yeah, it was him like a three hour band. Or something. Yes, yeah, still ridiculous. It, 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 but but algorithms are going to get stuff wrong. I mean, it's not algorithms are going to get stuff wrong. I just think that I think that overall, like cancel culture as a whole, it, it, it's just this weird moot point. And to go back to Louis C.K., I don't know what he did. He pulled his wiener out. I think he showed his wiener or something. I don't remember that. Or he tried to. I'm pretty sure he pulled it out and showed it to her or something. Well, he he. It was a staffer or one of his employees or like an up and coming comedian. Someone, yeah, she was an up and coming comedian. S- someone who there was a power dynamic there, and he basically definitely asked if he could jerk off in front of her. That was and it. Did that's it. hilarious. <laughs> Just like hang out, what? watch this. Yeah, she was like an up and coming comedian, and he's like, "Do do you mind if I yeah, rub just, one out?" Yeah, I mean that's. I don't know if I got the kind of confidence to just stare a new person in the face and make them. You did it. What I mean, that's also the what incident? a lot of the stand. Oh, I'm not telling you. That's that's different. But just <laughs> the to like rub thing. one out, like that takes a lot of effort and a lot of luck. It is <laughs> the incident. Huh? I mean, shit happens. Braxton, what do you think about it? What you, Louis C.K. He just wants to rub one out in front of some lady he's in charge of. I think something. that's a uh, real weird, real inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. So they canceled him. What what show did he get kicked off of? The the Louis show. It was literally a show named after him on... On what? On FX. FX. It was huge. Huge. Amazing show. Huge really? show. Fucking huge. It was probably the biggest show on the network. Canceled. Gone. Like, well, your show's gone. They just, like, fucking jetted it. Oh, well. He's still doing... He's still touring. He didn't for a couple of years, I think, or a year. And then he... And then he, he still didn't gets, during COVID? No, he still... Yeah, he, 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 I think his timing worked out. Okay. Like, <laughs> All right. You had to let it settle for a while. Is well, that what it is? Uh, maybe. What if you just never go away? That's what it worked for him. Ray Lewis just said, you know what? No. Nah. Next question. It's probably what he said. I mean, if somebody, you think if somebody asked Ray Lewis about the murder, the double murder today, statute of limitations, the statute of limitations, no, no they, no he already got trialed, double jeopardy. I don't think, I don't think any of us are qualified because there's different things that trigger double jeopardy. Like if new evidence and stuff comes up, there's new, there's things that can, 
moot that, if I remember right. Well, uh, circumstances, but I, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know. But it it wouldn't matter. There's no statute of limitations on murder. What about? I mean, you look at OJ. Mm-hmm. Think OJ? Uh, you think OJ deserves a job? I don't think OJ did it. I think his son did. Yes. I believe Jason did it. That's my personal belief. I believe Jason did it as well. Just Jason? Yeah. <laughs> I was there. Jason Simpson. You, you think you think his son Jason Simpson did it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about the case or anything. Have you ever thought about OJ got away with murder, and then got custody of his kids with a mom? Yeah, it's crazy. Raised those kids. Those kids. I don't know how old they were at the time. They were. I think they were seven, eight, somewhere in there. So he just gets custody of them and raises them into adults. I don't know if but they have. I, I saw do, some pretty convincing I, conspiracy or like the evidence. evidence. Well, there's yeah. a guy that did a whole. He did. A, he wrote a whole book about yeah. it because he was the investigator. And all, uh, they, they, when I saw him on Stern many years ago. He came in and presented all his evidence and stuff, and was just talking about it. It's pre- all the circumstantial evidence is pretty convincing. Also, Corey, there's something about a glove, right? But I also I didn't, didn't say that. that. I also didn't. I don't, oh yeah, no, I, think, I know about the glove. I think OJ knows about it. But, but those are OJ's. I just don't think I know, he I told him his son did it. Yeah, those are OJ's gloves. They had the receipt where he bought them and everything. I I actually love I, I the OJ case. That's my I mean, personal opinion. My 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 childhood was great because of what OJ did. You know? Was it with you that we watched his twi- tw- uh, Twitter videos? Dude, this Twitter is amazing. I think we did that already, but oh, we did man. it already. But if you got a, if you got an OJ Twitter, Twitter video, tw- I mean, I I it's personally yours truly. I think I think OJ does not get a job on purpose. Because I think um, it will go to that the uh, judgment. Come after it. Yeah, yeah, that judgment. Um, her, her dad is relentless about coming after that. Yeah, but I mean, it should be. I think his pension safe if he stays in Nevada. I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> That's why he lives in Nevada of all places, is because you know his pension's intact. They can't take it from him. Um, where if he moves and lives in a different state, then. Um, they can get his pension. I think right now he's on parole, so he definitely yeah. can't be traveling. Turns out you can't take back baseball cards or whatever the shit but he took back. He, yeah, but he, well, he drinks on Twitter, you know. So he has he has beer on Twitter every once in a while. He's toasting. Just and, hangs out with people. I mean, he plays golf every day. Have you, OJ OJ's life is not scratch my, I, golfer. I, don't, I do not know what his relationship is like with his younger kids. I know his older son and his daughters from previous marriage. Um, you know they. You can Google and see where they're talking about him or hanging out with him and stuff like that. But I don't know if uh, Nicole's kids have a lot to do with him. His, his son with Nicole, I believe, is a real estate agent in Florida. Who looked it up? That'd so. be an interesting uh, thing. Ask what. It'd be an interesting interview to get all their takes on that. You want us to call him up? <laughs> Skip Trace him. Hey, him we don't have to. He's a freaking real estate I mean, he's a real estate agent. agent. You can just call him up. Be like, hey, I want to interview you for this podcast. Don't the, have nothing to do with OJ killing your mom. We have seven viewers, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> don't have nothing to do with OJ killing your mom. We're just going to, you know, we're going to talk about real estate in Florida. Or do you think we just set him up and just come in here and be like, oh, yeah, by the way. Yeah, I think bait and switch 100%. Probably. This is a real estate podcast. We don't talk about anything else. But, what do you, I mean, seriously, like. What other cancel culture people can you think of that have been canceled that I don't think are canceled? I don't. Everyone, don't, all of them. Yeah, I don't really pay attention to who gets canceled. Like, I don't know who. Do you know anybody that's been canceled? Trump. Yeah, Trump got canceled. Took yeah, his but, Twitter away. I mean, Trump can, cancels himself. <laughs> and, and he does it. He's not really canceled. Like, he made jo- that's Jordan Peterson. That's what Peter- said. Like, Jordan people Pe- that have been canceled that aren't really canceled. Jordan Peterson. No, what's that Nate dude's name? Like, they've all been canceled. Kicked off all the social medias, but they're still out there making content. Jordan Peterson was doing his little... Yeah, he's on Daily Wire now. Yeah, there you go. Now he's on a new channel. Who's Daily Wire? In that, uh, in that favorite. Oh, yeah. He's got little, Shapiro I, I on it, was. Michael Knowles. Wasn't, wasn't the, the weird bald guy, um, the TikTok famous weird bald guy, wasn't he on somebody's platform? What TikTok ball guy? Weird, famous. The not Alex sure. guy that you were just talking about. Alex the, Jones? No, not Alex Jones. It, it's the same people that Alex Jones might be. Alex I said Jones Jordan Matt Walsh. Walsh. I mean, he's not bald. But. Not what? Not Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh is actually pretty funny. Oh, is that the one God. that just did that uh, the transgender movie? Yep. 
No, I, I had no idea about that. Oh, you need to watch that movie. It's, I, I, th- I just think it's funny the, whenever... You could get reviews to here and get lots of commentary. Uh, I don't know what we're... What are we going to do? We're going to review... I haven't, I haven't seen it. What's you funny just, about it? What, what are you talking about? You can't you can't review All it? All you see are the clips is all I'm saying. I didn't say it's funny. I'm just saying you get a lot... I, like, I, I, the feedback I, is going to be polarizing no matter what you do on the I movie. must not know who Matt Walsh is because I'm not thinking of... Somebody that he, uh, but um, he's got a beard. Andrew Tate, Andrew <laughs> yep. Tate, Andrew Tate. That's who's, a, whose platform was he on? His own. No, he started off on. He was on all of them, but he's not anymore. No, he was. He was a new. He was a journalist or a, no, or a podcaster. No. He was not a journalist. Yeah, he was he, doing his own podcast. No, Alex Jones. He was in with Alex Jones. No, no, not at all. Not, not at, at all. Not at all. Somebody Google that. Like he's he, no, does... he Twitch streamed. He didn't even have yeah, a yeah. podcast. He he streamed sometimes on Twitch. He uh, did YouTube was his main platform. I'll type it up here. Andrew. Where where did he? Uh, I guess that's what I'm curious about because you do always see clips of him in like a podcast studio. I just don't know when or where all that was yeah, taken. I think he did have podcasts with his no. brother, Fun. or I know it was a live stream. Yeah, it was the Tate brothers. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and a former kickboxer. And they just posted it on Twitch, uh, YouTube, Twitch. TikTok. I, he was not on Alex Jones's platform. No, I, I don't know. Well, his his Discord um, little course thing was actually pretty genius, pretty genius. MLM. Yeah, it was MLM. But but besides that, um, he his whole deal was. Oh, he was he was on Big Brother. There, the TV show. Yeah, he was on Big Brother a long time ago, and yeah, he got kicked out of there for like beating someone up. Or... <laughs> well, then he, then he started Hustlers University. Let's go. What whatever whatever this whatever this was like, I would have never known who this cat was had he not got canceled. Right. But then I but then I watched a girl review his little business plan. His business plan was pretty genius. His, his little university about growing social media. You had to go get clips of him, like long form clips. Clip them down and edit them, and then put them on your social media platform. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's like. It was like so a, he ponies yeah, his repost way me and you'll me post, you'll grow yeah what well, repost me it was like assignments like to go through the assignments like that's hilarious on his deal like you had to go get long form clips of him edit them and and upload them there's a little Asian girl that did a uh, did a um, a deal I bought Andrew Tate's um, course so you don't have to and she edited one video of him and put it up and she did a pretty good job of editing I liked it I thought it was good. But anyway, she's like, yeah, it's pretty. And, and she even says it, that it's pretty ingenious because now it's just people posting more more links of him to grow their uh, their own, um, like, selling his course because it's MLM. So they get a piece of every course that they sell for him. Gosh. That's, is that a pyramid scheme? No. It's, it's multi-level Like marketing. you just keep getting one more to – yeah, you just like, yes. I'm like I mean essentially like have you ever seen the breakdown of like an MLM like how many how many I guess layers it takes to get to every person on earth? <laughs> it's I, not that many layers. But but what I'm saying like like so if yeah, whatever however many layers, but if if I'm like I, I go post Andrew Tate content and y'all come into Andrew Tate's course and then you go learn how to post Andrew Tate content and then you post more H, Andrew Tate content so on and so forth, the end of it. But they canceled. I mean, the only little interview I saw of him at all, I've seen like two things that this dude said in his whole life, and the most interesting thing was that they kicked him off of Tinder, Uber, Airbnb, <laughs> Discord, um, took away Stripe, every payment platform. But why? Like, I know he's offensive, but he well, was just... I don't no, know. He, so he is lives in Romania right now because right. he cannot step foot here. He's under investigation by the FBI for sex trafficking. He um, made a bu- made his money by basically being a webcam pimp, like a online sex worker pimp. He had a house I where mean, he, you know, brought in women to stream like webcam only fans, and he would control their money and force them into that. Uh, the Uber and all that. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that affects him in Romania, but uh, there's also like videos of him beating up his girlfriends. And uh, 
it's not just him being offensive. It's well, like actual actual criminal behavior. I don't know nothing about it. Here's, I don't what, here's what I do know. I did not know who that dude was. Until he got canceled. Never heard a word that he said until the day they canceled him. And then it was like... You know, there's a guy like that who comes around every couple years, you know, who, like, appeals to the pickup artists, like, misogynistic youth. Um, Andrew Tate was just really good at it and funny. I don't I don't even know about that. I think, I think wholeheartedly um, what's missing from America's youth is strong male influence. I mean, I think that's what Jordan, Peterson, Jordan Peterson man. argues every day. Yeah, but I but – I, like – I was raised by my dad, right? So, but but strong doesn't equate toxic. It's not the same thing. I agree. I can't define toxic. I can't either. That's what I'm saying. Like, Everybody says any kind of like overtly male influence is toxic. That's why it's all been boiled down. You just labeled it toxic. I didn't I'm label saying it that's toxic. how it's boiled down these days. It's all boiled down. Like spoon. If you got to hit a motherfucker in the mouth, you got to hit a motherfucker in the mouth. Yeah, I mean stuff happens. But that, that's toxic, bro. Yeah, I don't think that's what well, toxic. Well, I think it's more either. so. There's a huge wave of uh, like something called the Manoverse. I don't know if you've, but, but online right now, like Andrew Tate, there's a podcast, Fresh and Fit. They all appear appeal to young men, and their whole narrative is, you know, being a high value man, being able to, uh, you know. D- have sex with as many women as you want, but your girlfriend can't do that. Your girlfriend can't have an Instagram. Very old school, you know. D- I don't what think we'd all school. agree. Talks. Like my dad never taught me that. Like, yeah, I don't. Yeah. My, my granddad, I don't, I don't, my yeah. granddad never said, "Hey, go <laughs> yeah, bang everybody that, and that's, that's, treat your wife like shit." Yeah, that's not that's old true. school. True. And this is what I'm saying. Like this is this is like all right. So I I don't know I don't know what toxic is. I don't. If you want to bang every woman on earth, you want to bang every woman on earth. If you act that out, if you decide, hey, I am going to go bang every woman on earth, go bang every woman on earth. Like, it's a lot of time. It is a lot of time. It's going to be a lot of drama. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like, does it, is, like, whatever the pickup artist, the hookup artist, like, wouldn't the way to stem that to get rid of dating apps, if they were serious, wouldn't they just get rid of dating apps? That's not the issue. The issue is that they won't allow their girlfriends to do the same. It's well, it's, I don't know. Like I, I don't. I, mean, I how, think those are like a subset, and that's different than yeah, the, I think the the strong male influence that like Jordan Peterson is and, talking and, about, and definitely different than what I'm talking about. But I think I think because there is no strong male influence, that because Braxton, you don't look at any of these dudes and think, oh, that's appealing to me. I think I want to be like them. Mm-mm. Why? I, I mean, not anything other than like. Like I told you before, I like not all of his messages were necessarily bad about like you got to be driven, you got to hard work, entertain. Yeah, huh. like those messages I agree with. Whatever you but know, that's but like I also stuff, haven't like, gotten right. I haven't gotten. I never really watched him. I don't know. You know. But what I'm saying is like like if a dude's like, hey, you need to bang all the women on planet Earth, every single one of them. You need to do. It's not going to have any effect on you. You're not going to be mm-hmm. attracted to it. You're going to be like, oh, that's a guy that I need to hang out with. Right. Why? think that uh i mean for me a lot of that's going to be how i was raised you know what my values are strong male influence well mm-hmm. i think that's, it's just important to have a positive well it's just like influencer too like, yeah oh, like look, I, I had an intact like family, the respect for a, your mom a, comes from your dad teaching you to be respectful right, and, and your showing mom. how to treat her and and what yeah. he did for her and, and for our family you know it's like from two people that grew up in a married household mm-hmm. with strong male influences in their life both granddads, mm-hmm. dads, well, I had strong female influences uncles, too. do what? I had strong female influences too. He's not saying that. It's just saying that there is that father no. figure there. The, I mean, yeah, I had it. I, I had the forty-seven uncles it. that would tell me. Like what I had a do. strong female it. influence. My mom too. You know, we're like, not. We're not. We're not. We're not, not saying that doesn't exist. Like what? Are you, why? I'm like, saying the nuclear family is is yes. is what's missing. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you from a broken household that never met my mom. Right. Okay. That only was raised by a dad, that had a dad that was a strong male influence, that you knew, like, no matter how old you get, you ain't going to be able to whoop this old man's ass. You know what I mean? I mean, I think you that can would, take him now. That would, maybe, maybe, I ain't saying going to try. But that knows, that, that tells you that when you get picked on, 
on the school bus when a motherfucker's boop, 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 boop. And he goes, well, see how good he can talk with his teeth down his throat, son. Hit him in the mouth. If you don't like listening to it, hit him in the mouth. If you're going to complain about it, complain about it to somebody else other than me. Is that toxic? Is it toxic? I think, I mean, that's all perspective. It is all perspective. Like It's all perspective. I can't imagine telling that to my granddad. Like, even wasting the time to tell that to him. Because he wouldn't have entertained it. What? What you just said. He that you got you picked on it. the school bus? Yeah, like, exactly. Wait a minute, his legs are gone. He started picking like, on you. Like, why, why are you... My granddad... Look, my granddad was the most loving person I, I had in my exactly. life, but I can't ever remember him saying that he loved me, ever. It, it, and I also remember him just putting me in check multiple times, like but, just but, ripping mm-hmm. my soul out and being like, and, hey. and telling you if you don't like it, do something about it. Yeah, he he is literally told, what are you going to do, whip my ass? Shut the fuck up and go back to work. That's right. <laughs> like, if you don't like it, do like, something about it. And it's toxic. But I don't uh, think it was. It, I don't think, think it, it was is constructive. Either. I don't think it is either. Now, everything else that you're talking about the, the 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 family dynamic, you know, you you take you take a kid. It's like like me knowing my dad. My dad teaches me how to hunt, teach me how to fish, um, teach me how to clean fish, teach me how to mm-hmm. clean deer. Like teaches me all these things that are useful skills. Like I can go in the woods, I can kill something, I can t- bring it home, cook it, clean it. But also not having a mom, so I had to do my own dishes, I had to wash my own clothes, I had to do all these things that make you really self sufficient, right? That make you extremely, extremely self sufficient. Like you don't have, nobody has to do these things for you because you've done them for yourself your entire yeah, I life. I get it. Okay. Now you take the opposite of that. You take a kid, a boy that's raised by a, a, a mother that doesn't teach him those skill sets that whenever he comes home and he was picked on or whatever, they hold him. They tell him it's going to be okay. You're going to be strong. You're going to be better for it. All of that. What's the outcome look like? What, what do they, what, how, how do they process? How do they process what that is? Do they become more timid? Do they become, how does it work? What does it look like? Okay. And then whenever they see, Andrew Tate on the internet, they're like, ah, that well, guy's cool. It looks. That's yeah, what I want to do. It. There you I, go. Yeah. I can I can see that. Like, <clears throat> so it, it it just you you've got to like, you know that's my one of my biggest fears is is you know raising a son because I see it right now. It's like, oh my god, this boy is hard headed. He's tough. He's got all the traits that make you make it in life, right? At two years old, he's got that persistent, that honoriness, that, that f- like, weird violence that it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to yeah. take up for myself even though I don't stand a chance. Like, I'm going to get crushed in this moment but by the opposition, it. but I'm going to fight for it. And there's a weird, like, so I, I worked with a dude one time, I, I can't remember what we were talking about. But it was when I had just the first one or the first child. And he's like, you know, I don't allow any disrespect in my house. We we consider that open rebellion and we will squash that. There has to be a happy medium. You got to let your kids talk a little shit to you every now and then. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, because like, right. you got to, like, you've got to, they, I don't want automatons that are afraid to challenge society. Like, I'm the dude that every time my kid's like, oh, I'm going to be late for school. And like, no. This is the school's problem, not yours, because they just want you there to make money. Like, like you're gonna be fine. Fuck the yeah. school. Like, but I, I mean, what I'm saying, like my, like I, I'm, I'm fearful for how my son would respond. Okay, and his mom's a great mom. His mom's a wonderful mom, perfect mother. But if he only had her influence, oh, yeah, yeah. if he only had her, her, like I think, I think he would be more violent i think he would be I more i think as he got I older i think he would like he you know I, I just think he wouldn't have he wouldn't have that boundary that he needs that hard so, like so i'd be willing to bet right now i got four kids that your baby who acts out in anger and slaps and stuff like every baby does yeah, because yeah. they don't have the they don't have the, the capacity to get their thoughts out of their mouth at some point so they act in violence sometimes that he is more willing to strike your his mother than he is you 10 times right because he knows 
that's not a proposition that you're willing to accept. We don't accept it. Right. We don't. We, we. So I also don't accept. Now, the, of course, there's that graduated deal where they get to the point where they're understanding li, uh, little people, mm-hmm. you know, where, where you have to make that next step. We've transitioned that with my five, my, no, I'm sorry, seven years old now. Around four or five, though, they have to make that understanding that you, I don't accept it for the mom. Like I, you you want to you want to see me come in the house or wherever they're at as yeah. quick as possible. Let me hear them talking smack to their mom. Like, no, that's 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 that's, that's the exact. Direct. I was like I was like, we were at dinner and he did something, and I was like, you got it, you got, let me over there. Yeah, no, that, like let me let me on that side of the table right now because he 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 threw his food down on the ground as soon as it got sat in front of him because he was mad that something got removed from in front of him. And, you know, it's like, but it's, it's a two year old now. I mean, he, he crawled underneath the deal. I thought he was going over there to hang out with Braxton and learn a thing or two. He went over there and started choking my bro out. My Suck head. a finger in my ear. Wow, that's that's that, that sucks. They got uh, little sharp fingernails. Yeah, that like, sucks real bad. He stuck it in there. He so. got it in. Whoa. there. I remember Zoe doing that to me one day. She just jammed it in there and went but like. He was, <sighs> he was he was he wasn't doing it when he was with Braxton. Yeah, he, he, wasn't, was he, he, he was playing though. He yeah he wasn't he wasn't choosing mm-hmm. violence. He was just like I like I manhandling me. That's what he's trying to do. We'll get over here. And I'm gonna make it awkward. For yeah, him. I mean that's what kids do, bro. Mm-hmm. Like like I encourage like I, it's a weird deal, man. And I, I don't know if I'm weird or not, but I tell my kids, the two older ones all the time, I'm like, like, I'm willing to accept you talking a little shit to me. Like, I get it. I know you're going to curse at school. I know you're going to curse around the corner when you don't think I'm listening. I'm not even going to be that mad about that. Don't do that around your grandma or your mom. Have some respect. Don't do it around your teachers, your church, because I'm going to smoke you if you do. Like, yeah. we're going to be like, we're going to have an issue. But it is unacceptable for them to breach that with their grandmas or like or their well, mama like we will have an instant and, issue and the best part about how we've raised um my daughter at this juncture is she doesn't cuss oh man my my kids don't either it, my deacon does we'll, we'll, he'll we'll, sneak it in there we'll correct we'll correct you for cussing yeah probably my, braxton for my oldest cussing. does that all the time won't correct me for it, but no, my, we'll, we'll correct other people. Say, you can't say that. Do you know what my oldest says? What? She said, Daddy, you've been spending too much time around Mr. Corey again. You're cursing a lot. <laughs> That's just rude. Well, I don't know if I, I need to go I to the bathroom. I just let it happen. I'm like. But I've got to get, oh, my God, I've got 7,000 missed calls. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if we got a uh, closing today. Got good pictures of uh, Biggins right here when he's a baby. Dude. So Braxton, the other day, do you know who Colin Firth is? He's a British inventor. Like, he just, mm-hmm. he invents stuff in his house. He made this thing. It was like a big pair of bolt cutters, but he was, like, cutting down trees with it. And I'm sitting there watching my seven-year-old son. It's like a air-powered hand that he's holding. He could just, like, clip your leg off with it. And I just made this silly joke. Deacon's like, man, that's really, that's really cool, Dad. But it could be, I don't know, you could do some cool stuff with that. I said, I guess as long as you don't forget to take it off when, before you go to the bathroom. And Deacon just sat there and looked for a minute. And then he started giggling. And he giggled for like 30 minutes the day before yesterday. And it made my day because I think I told him his first dick joke. <laughs> the funniest thing in the world. Did you get it, Braxton? I didn't get it. It's little chompers. It's just a really funny moment. Well, what'll for me happen as a if he forgets to take it off? It's a goes, pair of scissors. It would like the joke was. I hope he takes it off before he goes to the bathroom. Oh, but it was so funny watching this little kid like hear that type of like poop joke for the first time. He, you know, he's like, because like, he didn't know if he could laugh. <laughs> it's true. I mean, Emery. Uh, Emery says all these proper things to me all the time, and I always forget them. I just hate it. She thought it was really sweet. When she throws a, a thirty dollar word at me, and I'm she, like, "Whoa!" I feel like I, I often feel like I'm outside of y'all circle because I'm the only guy besides Braxton that is not one of like your original yeah. bunch of friends. Why? Well, but like, you're over, only outside of the circle because you won't come down and hang out with us. At stop! The lake house. Hold on. Look, what I'm telling you right now is, over the past two years, both 
uh, our other partner's young one, and mm-hmm. and both of them have finally warmed up to me. Emery, run of them big ones, not scared of anybody. Like well, he'll, he'll literally just go with anybody. That's pre pedophile arm. At the Might Rangers be. game, Emery came well, up we and hugged me, and then like parts are in here, slap me. Do what? At that. the Rangers game, Emery came up to me, hugged me, then slapped me. Yeah, On she the face? Tried. No, like on my leg. She tried doing <laughs> it to away. me. She was like, I'm going to hit you. And she was like, she was <laughs> going like, to hit me in my face. That I'm was like, so weird. Yeah, Emery, we're not doing that today. And I was like, I, I don't feel like any of this. Just go away. And she's like, okay. Then she went and hit him. <laughs> After a hug. After a hug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you think that was? I don't know. <laughs> she does that to me all the time. Like, she'll come up and slap me or something. But I just wasn't having I'm like, you just got to go away, Emery. Like, well, I don't feel like this. <laughs> Brady, Brady, um... Which Brady's been around her since she was a baby, baby, and he gets her. I mean, he gets her wound up. You've been around her whenever uh-huh. they're fist fighting. Jesus Christ! I'm like, because he calls her Emma Ray or something. He, that's not my name. That's not my name. And she comes at him, and Brady's a f- interesting guy. He's an interesting guy, but yeah, she. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I just figured she warmed up to me, like, like, the, like, like three or four times lately. She'll answer your phone when you're out of the car and be like, Jason, he's not here right now. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> this is Emory. Oh, all right, yeah, I know. I'm she hits you with that Emory. Yeah. Emory. That's right. Was well, it yesterday she um she was like <laughs> I don't I was I ain't even gonna say what she said because it was uh I was like I didn't think about it till this morning, but I was like, wait, what? What did she say? But I don't think she understood what she said. That's the best. Like, no, it's not the best. It was terrible. She was like, I'll just go ahead and say it because it's fucking pretty funny. She, the, There was this lady coming to clean her house, and um, she got a daughter that's the same age as Emery, okay? And so um, we were never there when she came and cleaned. Never there. Never, never came through. Um, anyways. And... But she did tell me that her daughter, and, and so I knew this girl because I go eat with Emory at school, and they'd come over there and sit and whatever. Anyway, so um, this her lady that was doing the cleaning's husband got mad, um, accused her of sleeping with me, right? And so she had to quit cleaning my house, so I didn't know that's why she quit. She didn't, she didn't tell me that. Like, you know what I mean? She just quit showing up to clean, so it was like whatever, not, not overly worried about it. It's whatever. But we were never, me and this person, like, she got paid on Facebook pay. I'm just never at home. Like, she would just go to my house. Yeah. And uh, anyways, and they seen the pictures of Emery, and that's how they put together, you know, because we got pictures of Emery at the house. That's how her daughter and her put it together. But her daughter told Emery why they, they don't clean our house no more. And Emery told me. Well, that sucks. It was it was hilarious. What was the reason? Because she. <laughs> uh, no, I, I know what the reason is. I'm just curious. What's the eight year old's the perception eight-year-old of the reason? Of it was the eight year old version of it was she said Took you know, out. Do, no, she said sleeping with. She was like she was like yeah. Um, the lady that used to clean her house, uh, daughter said that she can't clean her house no more because, you know, she thought uh, her dad thought her mom was sleeping with my dad, just like. Matter of fact. But it is just sleeping. But, it but it's known. just sleeping, right. you know? So it's like, <laughs> hey. My bad. So anyways, uh, they, uh, so it was just sleeping, but but it was it was this matter of fact way that Emery just just shouts this out to, to and, and anyways, now when she quit cleaning, when she quit cleaning, she didn't tell me why, but like since then she's asked to come back and and start cleaning, which I don't need nobody to clean. And I told her, no, nah, we're good now. No, nah, I wouldn't want that anyway. Because the well, next time and, then, and, then, and then she told me, she's like, yeah, sorry, I let you down because of whatever it was. And uh, anyways, um, yeah, that 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 was uh, that was pretty that was pretty interesting. But I but this morning I was thinking about it. And I was like, Emery, I was like, oh, but it's just sleeping. You know what I mean? It's like it's like we're taking naps together. Did, so I saw it. I love when people think they know what a word is and take it out of context like i saw a clip this morning like it was just a facebook post that somebody's wife had used the word bukkake in a sentence and he's like what do you 
what do you think that means? Because it was so out of context and it was around her kids. And she's like, you know, it's like bullshit and crappy. And he's like, no, nah, you need to uh, go look that up right now. So she went to Google and uh, she'd been using like work meetings and stuff like that. Cause she thought it was just like, yeah, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, but do you know who told that joke? Who told it? Burt Chrysler. Oh, that's funny. So they stole it from him. That's they even better. They stole it from him. That's it. But that's a hilarious joke, dude. I told you the queef joke or the queef thing, right? I worked with. What's his, that mean? No, no. Oh, I worked with. No, no, no. It's no. not a joke. It's a story. But what does it mean? We don't. Okay, so I worked. It? No, no. So we have oh, to understand queef? before you tell the. Yeah, what's you, you, what, you'll know one day. What, what's queef mean? <laughs> uh, it's when air expels from a female's. <laughs> Reproductive trauma. All right, we're good. Just good so, tell the story. So anyway, I'm it's driving. Worse, it's worse than what you said. Yeah, like, can a, you just call it a pussy fart? Yeah, it's a JJ fart. <laughs> so, so we. So hell, I'll take. Pizza. We're driving. We're driving for work. Me and a, a whole truck full of electricians. And this dude, he's like kind of a nerdy guy. He's like, "Hey, man, what are y'all doing back there? You guys really queefing it up?" And we're like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, hey, you're queefing it up back there." We're like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? He's like, you know, you know, like I thought it's, you know, it's whatever. And I'm like, do you know what that means? Uh, and what? he's like, yeah, it's like, it's like when you're just messing around or something. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not what that means, homie. So we proceeded to tell him and he had been using it. What did it. you tell him in the, in the, in the, in the. Oh, no, uh, I just told No, we were, it's a bunch of electricians. We just told him what it was. We're like, <laughs> and he's like, are you kidding? I use that all the time. Like this dude's like on the school board and stuff. And it's like, like when people say y'all to stop jerking off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so he's, but the best part, the moral of the story was, or the best part of the story was, because I was just a savage electrician at the time. He's like, I've, I've never, he made, tried to make a joke. I was like, well, I've never made that sound before. I'm like, I guess you don't make a tight enough seal, dude. <laughs> and of course, then everybody just paws on the dude. And it, I felt bad for him after that. Well, hey, y'all. So we're hitting like 240. That's like something, or it's like six right, super long. Uh, Ryan's asking if y'all want to eat or if he should order pizza. And no, I don't order pizza. But Brexton, what's your uh, what's your word that you don't know what means that you sometimes use? I sometimes misspell words on iPhone and send them anyways. Like mm-hmm. I, definitely, I, I, I when iPhone corrects my spelling to defiantly, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> They'll know. That's good. I mean, do you have any? I wouldn't know. Well, if I knew, I wouldn't use it <laughs> incorrectly. I'm I, sure there are words that I use incorrectly that what? I don't know what they mean. Defiantly? No, like whenever I'm trying to say definitely via text, and it spells it defiantly, oh. but it auto corrects over to defiantly, and I'm like, why are you doing this to a perfectly good word? iPhone does it. We've we've done so many deals in Hood it, County, in Hood County, and and I feel bad because I think. You know, whenever I type good now, it auto corrects to hood oh. every single time. And I think people think, you know what I mean? Like, because sometimes when you're using good, it's like, what's he trying to say right here? Like, is he what's hood, me? bro? Yeah, what's, what's, he, what's, he, um, what's, he, what's he trying to say? Like, what's he trying to say? Mine auto corrects fuck to duck all the time, and I'm constantly typing that, and it really irritates me that it won't learn that I don't want to say duck. It, it, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's true, but you got any? Not one. I like I said, like I wouldn't know. What do you mean you wouldn't know? I'm not saying that I use every word correctly. I'm sure there are words that I use incorrectly, but there's no way for me to know if they are. Because if I did, I wouldn't use it incorrectly. Well, but I, I mean, I, I know there's still words that I probably mispronounce because I, I only them. knew them from reading them, like contextually understanding them. But nobody ever said them around me. Did I've been caught out on that. I so. figured out my uncle, my uncle Hick. Um, you know, I, I think people thought he was really stupid for a long time, um, but he wasn't. He just couldn't hear. Oh, that's funny. So he can write perfectly, but he can't. Just need some. He ear- can't. Well, he can't pronounce the words. He's so hard right. of hearing that whenever he learned to talk, <clears throat> he heard the words differently. He knows how to spell them. Can write perfectly, but says them says certain words wrong. And I, I asked my aunt about it. I was like, "Why, well, you know, and he's like, well, when he learned to talk, he's, he's always been hard to hearing, but they didn't have hearing aids when you get like the last, you know, our 20 years of his life or whatever. Well, so, you got to correct that stuff early. Cause that stuff. Yeah. So uh, anyways, I, I, you know, I always thought that was kind of interesting that, you know, everybody just thought he was kind of 
dumb because he misused words. But dude, he just, I saw. Uh, I know we got to get out of here. I saw a dude this morning on TikTok. He was explaining the aerodynamics. Y'all can the, keep going in the engineering of know. why staggering your fletching on an arrow uh, decreases drag. And he just looked like the dumbest redneck you ever met out there. And and that's the trope, right? Is always like, oh, most rednecks are dumb. And this dude's breaking down like hardcore engineering. Like, yep. True. Like, like, I mean, nobody would ever thought you would understand the science of drilling a well if they were just talking to you at a bar. Maybe in Texas. But if you're in a bar in New Jersey, they're just, you know. They still, there's going to, if when they break those clips up of me drilling a well, we're going to find out how little I actually know about oh, drilling yeah, a well. Oh, yeah, it's going to be savage. Like Same you, with the electrical. They'll be a, with, oh, that's not how I did it. And, or, or the Santa Gaputist. Yeah. You know? That's the that's the best part about uh, web clips. And it, I mean, but that's, we talked about this the other day. It's a trades thing, too. Every time I go on a job after another electrician, I'm like, oh, it's good you called me. You, know? <laughs> you see this right here? That one inch EMT, that's the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Like, it's a good, it's a, oh my God, it's so good you called me right now. It's, this, it's, this, this well would have blown out. This, this well, it would have been over. Thank God you called me when you did. <laughs> thank God you called me when you did. I'm glad I'm glad I could get here. So, yeah, the very first that was the worst part about working solo. So you're you're out there by yourself and your relief is fourteen like they get fourteen days and you get fourteen days. And really you're measured by how much you can get done in those 14 days. And sometimes mother nature has other plans. You know what I mean? Um, the well, the weather, a lot of things can hold you back. But for the most part, I would just kick ass in my 14 days. Like I would get there and everything would change because I'm not, do you think I'm a micromanager on some things? Yes. On some things. No. Do you think I'm a micromanager? No, I, I mean, think it depends on what it is. You're pretty good about balancing that because some things have to be micromanaged, depending on the circumstance. Well, when I drilled oil wells, I bet you everybody was like, I'm a micromanager. But I wasn't a micromanager. It started off the same way you started off. Like you get a job and you're young and you understand a good portion of what needs to happen and how it needs to happen, but you don't understand every everything about the job. So you have to go learn from the people that you're going to supervise. And so for me, that was directional drilling. Like I never sat in a driller's chair with a directional driller behind me. Um, I had, I, I got to co company man consultant and didn't understand their directional drilling job at all. Because when you're a rig manager, you don't mess with directional drillers. Right. You don't have, no, you don't have any reason to talk to them. You talk to the mud engineers a little bit because they're out there on the pits and you're doing the mixing. And, and when you work Derek's, you work with the mud engineer a lot. So you understand a little, a little about mud, enough about mud, but still a blind spot for you that you got to learn why and how. But on directional drilling, it was like, I'm completely lost of how and why they run their equipment the way they do, like what the, what the upper limits of their equipment are and everything else. So when I got to South Texas, I was on a rig and we pissed off my boss and my lead, I was working nights, and my lead was mad, and he wanted to break something. So he wanted to tear up their equipment to where he wanted to tear up the directional driller's equipment. So the differential pressure is like you got. He you, wanted to break it on purpose? Yeah, he wanted to break it Why? on purpose. To prove a point. Oh. You know, to, to, to show what happens. Let's just shut down production so we get a few days off. No, 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 not a few days off. You don't get days off. He wanted, like, once somebody, we had an issue, and, and it held us back, okay? And so the, the idea was, we'll catch up. We'll catch up by running on this shit to its maximum allowable variables. Like, the maximum allowable tolerance that this equipment can handle, we'll run on it that hard. And then when something breaks, because we're trying to go so hard, we can point it back at our boss and say, see, this is what happens when you get in a hurry. Right. And, and that was his idea. Right. But here's the other thing. He's got me working knots and I'm new. So whose fault's it going to be? Yours. Yeah. He ain't, he ain't going to take credit. He tells me what to do. He knows I'm going to go do it. What he didn't anticipate was the equipment wouldn't break. Now, now he's got a new drilling schedule. Oh yeah. We, re, <laughs> we, re, we, <laughs> we, sucks. I, did, like, like, did the, you know that's what happens in that situation? They're like, oh, what? this is what y'all are capable of? Okay, cool. Is, yeah, Keep so doing it. It was taking 30 days to drill these wells. 30. Like, so we had a really good job. Like, we got to pussyfoot around. Right. 
and take because that's what days. everybody expected. Yeah, and take thirty days to drill. It takes thirty well. days to drill a well. When 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 my dude was like, "Here's what I want you to do." I went over to talk to the directional hands, and I was like, "This is what we're going to do." So differential pressure. So you got a bit, and and you're pumping pumping fluid through the inside of the pipe. The mud motor's on the bottom, and it's and the fluid. It's got a turbine in there of some sort, and it turns the bit even without the pipe turning. Hmm. So if you're pumping, you know, 500 gallons a minute or 600 gallons a minute or whatever it is, you got a, pr- a limited amount of pressure on the surface that's going to limit you. You got a, a, a minimum number of gallons per minute you got to pump through the bit. And then you got what's called differential pressure, which when you set that bit on bottom and it starts meeting the dirt, it's going the pressure is going to rise because now it's got back sure. pressure. Back pressure plus the weight of the stack. Well, the, yeah, yeah. So, so the d- typical differential pressure we drilled water, with was two to three hundred psi. The motor was rated for eight hundred, so you could go up to eight hundred, but we drilled with two or three hundred. Sure. And then your S- surface save pressure. Save equipment. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you know, if you tear it up, you're gonna have to trip pipe, and that's expensive. And you know, you don't want to do trip that. Trip pipes pulling it out, right? Pull it. You got to pull the bit all the way out, <laughs> change the mud motor out, put a new one on. So they don't want to do that. So, bang, we take off. That's so stupid. And, and and so I'm like, what's the maximum amount of pressure you can put on this differential pressure? He's like, the motor's rated for 800. I'm like, we're going to run 800. He's like, bullshit. And I'm like, we're going to run 800. He's like, you're going to have to call my boss. I'm not going to do that. And I was like, well, give me your boss's number. I'm like, hey, we're running 800 PSI on this mud motor to drill the tangent. If this guy ain't going to do it, get me somebody out here who will. And we stood on that thing. And in my twelve hour shift, we did four thousand foot. But that thing at rated eight hundred probably has a two, at least a two x safety factor. Probably but, a two point five. Well, they they rebuild them in right, they're, they're, but they still have to build them with a safety factor. Yeah, but they rebuild them so many times. It's just anything can break on those things. Sure, it ain't. It don't matter if you're running two hundred pounds or eight hundred pounds. If it's gonna break, it's gonna fucking break. That's that's what so, we learned about the equipment. But, so so what's what's really fucked up about this that you don't know is now his boss that told him this has to come back to a new schedule that because the new guy flipped it off and the new guy gets all the credit for the extra production and now he looks like an asshole for dragging his feet for all this time. The old boss. Yes. So like, so so, so, like, so like so now I'm in this situation where I got this got this guy, he goes to bed. <laughs> And we're, we, you start off drilling the plug you and you got to go slow. With your dick kicked in. And we, we drilled 4,000 feet. We, we had these. So all of our cuttings, it's oil base. So it's got, it's drilled with diesel and the dirt that's coming out of the ground gets mixed with the diesel and oil. And it, and it, it's got to go in these, um, these, um, they're like our dump trailers. They're like, they're like the little things that you set out the, what are they called? Uh, I can't remember what they are. Uh, it's a, it's a frack tank. No, yeah, it's, but it's, a, like a frack tank. It, it's, it's a big dumpster is all it is. No, it is a dumpster. It's a roll off. Yeah. They, they, so, but, so, it, but they're different. It is a little different. It is a roll off, but it's. No, it's the exact higher. same thing. It's yeah. a roll off. Like our cuttings went into the roll offs. Right. Because they didn't want to get oil based on the so ground. So you filled up all the roll offs? So, so they, they, we had two companies worth of roll offs out there because we'd fired one company. And hired another one, but the new company or the old company hadn't come and got the roll offs. Oh, that's so much. So, good. so, so now you don't have enough for the next morning. Oh no, no, no! It's even worse than that. So, so the roll offs, you you've got a guy sitting there on like a mini X, and he's just loading it into trucks, and the trucks got to go, and they come, they turn around and come back, and you and you call one, like when you're drilling under normal circumstances, you don't you don't need one, but every, I don't know, f- maybe five or six hours. You need another truck. Well, we normally make about 800 foot in a tower. We made 4,000. We, like I was, I didn't realize how many, how many trucks we were going to need. So I had trucks coming and trucks turning, but you got to Like you got to tell the trucking company like, Hey, tonight I'm going to need two trucks on me all night. I'm going to need three right. trucks on me all night. If you're going to do a high volume sure. of something, you didn't have I'm, enough trucks. I could not get trucks. I'm calling everybody. I could not get trucks. So I'm just filling off roll-offs and hauling them off to the side. I'm throwing another one underneath and just dragging it off to the side. I got two companies worth of roll-offs full of cuttings and an army of trucks on the way by the time he gets there. So not only did he come on and we had drilled, you know, half of the tangent already, but he got there and he was pretty much completely out of roll-offs and had a line of trucks out there. So he had a whole bunch of work because, you know, trucking is coming in and out, signing Did tickets. he drop the pressure on it? Yeah. No, no, no. We we he stood on it. We stood on it. 
We we I got that plaque. I put it. It's on my Facebook. We set a record that well. Uh, we drove it in ten days. So we drove that whole well in ten days. Oh, and that sucks though. <laughs> well, it did suck, but we took a field from thirty days to ten days and made it the new normal. And um and and that guys like like whether or not anybody and, and nobody's gonna look at that and go oh well yeah that's what happened like I I don't give a shit it's the rig number was Archer eleven it was a new rig um I can tell you the bit we used. I was there, and and we we did it with an Altera bit, in in the Eagleford shell, took them down to ten days, um, set the new standard for for that, and then then once I got my own gig, you know what I mean, I didn't I was like I would get new guys in there, new new directional drillers, and I would be like, look, here's how here's how a well works. You've got you've got a formation, and it's top to bottom, it's it's this thick, so that's called your window, right. So you might be able to go ten foot high and ten foot low, right? But you're going to keep it right here, and then typically on, it, I mean, a twenty foot window is pretty normal. So ten foot high and ten foot low. This is the line they want, but ten high, ten low. That's it. Right and left would be about twenty five foot. Okay. So, you, so it'd be a fifty foot window right and left. So say your line that you're going to be drilling two uh, seventies west. So say you're going to be drilling two eighty. All right, so you're going to hold it at 280, and you got to do a 90.5 inclination or 91 inclination. So, and you've got that 25 foot window. Well, people would do what's Why called. Why would you be to, doing an inclination? Because that's the way the formation lays. Oh, okay. So it's you're you're, you're just back staying up into in one it. formation. I guess, and that's it. And as long as your gamma hangs in there, which means you're still in that formation. <clears> like so it's, you, just for everybody, like you, inclination. You know that, right? Inclination, declination. Yeah, like it's incline, decline. So the yes. formation's moving up. That makes sense. That's it. And and so that's your pay dirt, right? And people will do what's called trying to paint the line. So they're just trying to stay right in the middle of that. And I wouldn't. I would be like, look, if if the target line's 280 and we get a survey back that says it's 277, we're three degrees out of inclination, which means every hundred foot you drill, for every degree you're out of inclination, you move the bit from where it was to 1.75 feet over per degree of inclination. What's 1.75 times three? We'll just round up. Six foot. Three and a half. Yeah. Roughly six foot. I mean, it's less than six foot, but it's It's 5.25. 5.25. So you get that and you're three degrees out of inclination. So you move 5.25 foot over. How long can I drill in this? Well, you're already swinging back. Well, I'm going this way. I'm going left, yeah. and I'm and I'm on the line, and I got a 25 foot left hand window. I can stay over there for a while. You know what I mean? I can stay over there. Yeah, for but you, so you're foot. just snaking your way I, back I, and forth. I can stay over there for 500 <laughs> foot, and then and then, well, not maybe not 500 foot, but 400 foot. I can stay over there. Well, by the time you cross then, the median again, you start turning. And then I got to correct it. Yeah. So what they would do is they would come out and they would slide. You know, they do these little five and six foot slides, 10 foot slides to try to correct that right then at that moment. I'd be like, fuck that. You get to the outer banks of the window and then you do a big, you know, 15 foot, 20 foot slide and you send her back the other way. And we'll go all the way over to the other fucking side of it. And then. (laughs) I mean, it probably is not that much extra pipe when you really look at it. it, At the end of the day, the rig rate, everything on locations costs you eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a day. Um, a couple of joints of extra pipe because you drilled a little bit longer hole. It actually going to increase your uh, your production zone. I don't know, but they, they and and they'd be like, "Well, you got to get pipe in there," and I'd be like, "That's my problem, not yours." But the other thing you'll learn is, or at least what I learned, is I it would it would walk three degrees and then it would walk three degrees back the other way, and your and your up and down window was tighter because you had to stay in the formation. So we'd monitor it a little tighter. But I mean, that thing would walk, and you would you would sometimes rotate. Well, it's just natural too. So instead of sliding every two stands or sliding every three stands, we would drill 20 stands and never have to slide. So we we ended up, um, I mean, the way, and, and directional drillers hated it. They were like, you're micromanaging, you're over here, you need to stay over there in your trailer, you don't need to be over here doing doing all this. And I'd be like, nah, bro, like, you call me for permission to slide. You let me know if you think you need to slide, and I'll let you know if you can. <laughs> They'd be like, fuck you. And, and dude, keep in mind, this is coming from a 26-year-old, too. Yeah, like, well, I can't imagine a more cocky Corey Thompson. 
Oh, it was it was it was on, but but I didn't I didn't sleep like I slept, but I napped. So I would take naps just throughout the day, and I would stay out there. I mean, I would make all these little projects because otherwise it was torture being there. Sure, like it was it was you couldn't leave, you couldn't leave location, you couldn't go eat whatever groceries you brought, what all you had. What's the longest shift you've ever worked, Brack? I don't know. I mean, you? I don't know. It's sixty days. No, I mean like straight shift to work. Oh yeah, no, no. Uh, longest I ever stayed up without sleeping was about sixty three hours. Yeah, I think I've done. I uh, mean, I've worked too many thirty sixes, and I, but you're a ghost after thirty six, and you're I've, just taking naps. And I've driven thirty six. Yeah, I don't want to do that either. I've, That's insane. Um, with Brandon <clears throat> in the passenger seat. So I've done a. I've dude. I've worked a twenty four and driven all the way across the state of Texas. No. I mean, like, from Oklahoma back. Yeah, the only reason hours. why I did that drive was because I didn't trust Brandon. It was snowing. We it was snowing. We left Pitts. Uh, we, well, we left Mansfield, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's a long drive. And dude. and drove back to Grosbeck, and it didn't. The ice didn't leave the road until Dallas. Well, we finished that lack. Oh, we finished that lack. Those lack skids in um, Watford City, and. I went back to the place I was staying, put all my shit in my truck. My old man was there. We took a took a shower, and we took turns driving all the way back. Me and my old man drove all the way back. I dropped him off the airport in Albuquerque because it was Thanksgiving Day. He flew home, and then I drove from Albuquerque back down to Cruces. So, did you uh fuck? Did you tell Spoon about your Series Seven? Uh, nothing in particular. Is he getting sponsored? <laughs> takes his test in <clears throat> month congratulations well my security industry essentials so i'll uh i'll have that test and then after that have to go get sponsored so well, he's gonna, you got a connection for that the other day yeah we got we got a lot at the of game. connections yeah or at the not now, the game tell them about your tell them about your connections you got tell them about your options got one um up in washington state no college degree I think two baby mamas there's a lot of investment banking and uh this it sounds like it's management. right up your alley yeah i mean manages 30 40 million dollar funds like what are you gonna do with it once you get your series so it's gonna go to work for that guy just that i mean I, I think that's a really big advantage being able to solicit money from people to to go trade on their behalf whether it's real estate um securities anything so what do you what do you uh when are you trying to go spring? Yeah. Do you think he should go to Washington where the two baby mama guy is? Or do you think he should stay close to home? I don't know. How bad can you fuck that up going to Washington for a while? I mean, you're probably going to get a lot of dirty looks in your big ass truck driving around up there. Well, he's got a car. Um, his, I'm assuming you're was- Washington State, not Washington city yeah stay uh, it's outside of seattle i don't know man you gotta make some mistakes you're still young yeah what's the worst case go up there and marry a it's cold it's gonna be cold yeah that's the worst thing about it i think what do you think well what your other options in austin well, yeah i've got a couple in austin um follow up with nice. a lot of hot girls in austin you're single uh, dude mm. but i but you don't know what the pay is gonna be yet that'll probably dictate. i don't think that would even matter you got enough money saved up it, It'll matter whenever you're looking at picking between Seattle and fucking living at your parents' house. How much? Uh, how long do you have to do your apprenticeship with them, or whatever that's going to be? I think it's at least a year before you'll qualify to take the exam. So, and do they have to vouch for you? No, they just like I have to be with the sponsoring broker dealer. That uh, well, I mean, like. Is it based off of like? It's just the test. It's not any. It's not like an interview or board type thing. No, I don't. I don't mean that. So like with Colby's a great example. Dude got mad at him. Won't sign off on his papers that he's a uh, that he has his mm-hmm. three eight, three years worth of time. I, I have to be sponsored, but from that point, it's purely just I show they sign off that I'm going to take the test, and then if I pass, I pass. But they have to sign off. Yes, I'm okay. going to go take the test. Well, so the reason who's they broker and this is the reason i ask because with electrical 
Oh, plumbing, I'd be so mad. Plumbing, whatever. <laughs> oh my god. Plumbing, whatever. If a guy tries to hold you back like that, and you've got your pay stubs, you can be like, "Here's my pay stubs." I still got. I have a folder, a big ass folder of my pay stubs. Which one do you think if you did a year, and they, here's here's the problem being young and talented. When I worked Derek's, that's where I was getting at. <clears throat> if he if you're making him more money, in that position, and I don't you're leaving, think you would in this case though. Because there's certain things that you won't be able to do, so it's like, that's where I think the difference would be. I What's hope that? so. I, it, I mean, because I, I may be that, totally wrong. That's a I'm not there we, yet. we all know. We've probably been in that situation well, before. Where we had our heads stood on because we were making more it, money for the guy than we were. Oh yeah, no, no. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I, like, uh, like when I was working Derrick's, they were like, "Yeah, we, you know, we'd give you this drilling job that's coming up, but then we'd have to replace you working." Yeah, Derrick's and, and you're like, "Well, fuck you then." It's easier for- to find a shitty driller than it is to find a great Derrick man. So. Just keep being a great Derek man. You'll get the next one. And that the conversation will probably go like, uh, um, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, I, th- I know you're ready, but, you know. I just think you need a little more time. You just need a little more time, you know. It, you know, it, I there's, just, there's, there's still some things out there that we, we want to get you exposed to. Yeah, I think there's some stuff I could really teach you, and I'd really just yeah. – I'd like some more time in the seat because I know that I'm putting my name on your – I'm stamping your my yeah. name on your application. That may happen. Well, I, I mean, I mean I, like, if you get the, for sure. But if you get that vibe, mm-hmm. and, and it will. So I know a lot of the bigger firms, like a J.P. Morgan or Fidelity, like they're more geared towards, like they have that set up. You start out in this position, you're able to take your test, you pass. Now you're in this position. Now you're a trader. Something. Yes. Yeah. Like that. That's kind of how it works with some of the bigger ones. With the smaller one, like a private real estate mm. equity fund or yeah. something. That's where I think, bro. That's definitely. I think you should do it for one one reason only. What's the size of the company at both places? Uh, One, I mean, they've got a couple hundred million under management. It's the guy out of Washington State. How many employees? That's what I'm saying. I don't know, less than ten. Oh shit! Well, that's not relative then, because I was gonna say if you're going like J.P. Morgan, it would be worth it just to realize how shitty middle manager kind of corporate culture is to never fucking deal with that shit again. It's the worst place you'll ever be in your life. I fucking hated that time in my life. Well, fucking middle a- managers trying to constantly fucking try to explain to the bosses why they're still relevant and constantly trying to tell you why their job is there. Like, it's fucking worst. <laughs> well, they're, one of the ones in Austin might be closer to that. Um, but I've got one in Belton that's like a ten people with- three-person shop that still does pretty good. So it's like, I've got options. I just... Need to pass his first test and start talking to those people. I mean, well, there's a lot of niceness to be able to live so, at home. And, yeah, well, I mean, I just, I, I look at, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, so here's the other side of it, just just to put this out there. When I, I, I graduated school uh, from a school that taught information systems primarily on COBOL, an antiquated system. One of our biggest. Nobody knows what uh, It's a programming language, common-oriented business, common business-oriented language. It's an antique uh, computer coding language. It's this, still this like an iPhone. No, it's the language that was written. Stuff was written with. But when I graduated college, there was more lines of COBOL written than all the other languages in the world combined. It uh-huh. was the most common line, the common language that you could program in. You know who really used it? Because mm-hmm. we were moving on to third generation languages, and now we're fifth. Walmart, and Walmart would come heavily to Tarleton State University. Uh, Walmart, Walmart would come heavily. Keep going, and, and they would come there and try to recruit you. And they would come. A lot of my friends that would go there would go to whatever town that is. It's not Bentonville, Arkansas, and there's no other industry to hire you away. So that's the other thing you have to think about is being geographically isolated. So they come there and recruit. Keep going. So you get to a place like that. If you're in Belton, you have other options. You can always quit your job and be like, "Fuck this place." Like I, mm-hmm. I don't gotta have a place to live. Like I can go right down here to Austin. We well, ain't no fucking but quitters. I know that, but I'm just saying, like, in Washington, if you don't have the resources, that's the other side of it. That's the only other thing I no, take into only, account. The only thing to take into consideration if oh. you're going to Washington is how much rent times 12. If that's, that's a job you want. Can, can I write I that check that? today? Is that the one with $200 million in? Can I write yeah, that check? A couple hundred. Can I write that amazing. check today? Ten dudes. Jesus. Can I write that check today? And will I have to get rid of my truck or will I have to get rid of my car um, to, to make it by or will my – Real estate cash flow hardy enough to um to where I can keep both payments. You could trade now, both in on a Ford Bronco. 
You could. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's just that. Like, that's the only equation that I've thought about. That, it's like, that's, what will it cost? And, and I would want to write that check. Yeah. So I don't have to worry right. about it. I take it while I have it. And then at that point, I figure out, all right, that's I've good. enjoyed it. Do I sell the Mustang? Do I sell the truck? Or can I, can I last? Yeah, can can I can I make it? Do I want to be do I want to be worried, or will I be making enough money to where these mm-hmm. payments definitely won't matter, and right. and and I will and I will be fine. Now I I will, you know I I would probably leave the truck in Texas or the car and leave it with Aunt Linda. She'd drive that for you. She no, no, would. I would leave the truck in Texas because I wouldn't want to get around up there in, in that I just truck. wouldn't want to take mm-hmm. one of my cars or our trucks up there and have it all fucked up from the snow and ice Rush, and shit. That's true. Just trash. I, like I don't know. I mean, that'll be a decision to make at that point. That. But it's like, that. my only thing is like, I will not allow any of that stuff to be a distraction from what you I'm working on. still got the Honda. So I like, could sell you a $2,000 crappy car. Go get the car. Honda. There you yeah, go. Honda goes up there. Yeah, absolutely. stays in Texas. Absolutely. Linda will take care of that car. I was. You made a really good point. At that point, I probably will just say, like, look. I might rent the truck. Well, you take I'll just the, give the Mustang to Linda for the time being. Say, yeah, like, you take you know, the, take the and, car and up there and just we'll give it the away. Truck. Give it away while you're gone. If I if no, I rent out the truck, I buy – that'll be my, my <laughs> end of year. Who needs to rent a truck? I might rent it from you. I would go. put less miles on it well, than everybody So I'm going to – I'll have to buy a dump trailer you. this year for a tax write-off, so I just rent out the combo. Yeah. Truck trailer? Oh, I figured out what happened to your – I figured out what happened to your dump trailer. Oh boy! DJ caught the door at the Cleburne transfer station. Yeah, caught did he the wall. fix it yet? No, no, no. It's at it's at uh, the property of Mart right now. God, DJ. which he called a bunch. I he, I like which, love DJ. I love the kid. Like he is. He doesn't text it at all. So oh, he's just so dumb sometimes. Well, he, like about the weirdest shit, and it's always about breaking equipment. DJ says or leaving f- equipment at the dump. Like just, I took it out of the dump so I could unload easier. You left our freaking chainsaw at the dump. Yeah, I don't know where it's at now. Great, dude. Yeah, but that's those are young DJ mistakes. DJ says some of the funniest things. The funniest. He's a he's a hilarious kid. <laughs> no, no, no. He's not. He doesn't say I'm trying to crack a joke. He just. I mean, as a person, he's his, hilarious. His truth is great. Have you have you? What what? He's what, very matter of fact on a lot of shit. It it's. Fucking hilarious when his brain just farts out of thought, <laughs> and you're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, I'm, what were we talking uh, about the other day that you asked him how Olivia was? Doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, did, what did he say? Um, God, I, I laughed well, okay. so hard because <laughs> well, I can't. He said something to me. Um, I just said, "Hey, what's uh, what's Olivia doing later? It's her birthday. I just want to see if she want to hang out." She's like. He said something. He's like, "Just know, whatever you do to her, I'm gonna do to you right after." <laughs> Whoa, that is unsettling. Like, and it was like, no, it wasn't like he. Whoa, it was like, bam. It's like he knew what. If someone says this, I will respond with this. What? Well, but he also like. I mean, he's a big kid. What, like, I don't what, know if I want to fight he him. Used another day completely wrong. That's. I wouldn't correct him. I would just and let he, that happen, he, dude. On this podcast, he would. He would just be. Comic relief. And like, the odor. He called like I, so. I'm selling a bunch of my uh, high end knives that I collected years ago because they're just collecting dust. And I was posting them the other day in a knife collector's forum to sell some of these things. And he's in there. And, and he's like, "Hey, let me know what the what you're going to sell those for." I'm like, "Bro, these these are like 500 a piece." Like, yeah. He's like, "Yeah, I'm in the market for some of those." I'm like, "You're definitely not." <laughs> it's like I'm really in the market. I'm like, I don't think you are, homie. Like. You just bought a house today. You're buying a duplex this week. You like, oh, I'm over there. He'll be fine. Did we we didn't get the duplex through, did we? No, I'm going to help him. Mean? I'm going to offload him with, uh, I got all these tools. We're sorting we figure out a lender? Now. Yeah. What are, you're going to help him buy a duplex? No, no. I'm going to help him get his little business established with all these extra tools I got. Oh, yeah. That's that's good. But like, did we, did we sign a lender on it yet? Mm, probably not. I wonder if I can call call Eddie. Say, hey, we, look, can we do this on a broker's opinion? It's a little duplex. We'll help, we'll help him refinance it. We'll put some private money on it. Man, we looked at, I don't even know if we should talk about this on the podcast. Were you, you weren't there yesterday I, when we looked looked at Jet's uh, loan yeah, volume. Yeah, I, I was there. I left at the end. Um, $85 million. We hit probably do need to break a million a dollars three hours. in uh, fees this last month. Who, How long have we been going dollars? Somewhere? We? Jet. I think about three twenty. A million dollars in fees? Yeah, last month. 
Who t- they said that on the meeting? Mm-hmm. Record month. So still going strong, still lending. Damn. Like, but still with the expectation that it's like got to be conservative. <laughs> need to make sure that it's not risky and. But still coming through on deals. I uh, I there's a gridlock right now. I'm I'm I'm. I mean, this is like a complete segue. What what did did what did God say to us? We're at three hours and twenty minutes. Oh, I yeah. I need to go to the bathroom. Number two. No, number one. One and a half. Nope, just one. Can we talk about real estate, the market, real quick? It won't take but two seconds. I do think we should talk at real estate at least once every four hours that we talk on. We just did. Podcasts. What were we just talking about? We're talking about how the best lender in Texas is still coming through but, strong. Unless you're Blake. <laughs> Jet lending. No, nah, Blake. 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 Blake has a foreclosure. Bro, I, I know there's a reason Blake didn't wasn't able to get that. Well, cash reserves probably part of yeah. it, but I don't. I mean, I'm not. I I'm not hating funny. on Blake. I, I know just, that. I just thought it was funny. Like um, I was trying to make a joke. It was um, just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what I, What I will tell you is here's 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 how the here's how the it's kind of like um kind of like a ball hits and then the ball moves. Mm-hmm. You know those the little doot, doot, yeah, doot. they've reached off. Mutant's There's no more uh, momentum. Newton's, Newton's cradle. cradle. There's no more Im- impetus. But here's here's we're <coughs> we're at a point. We're at a threshold to where, like. The energy is passing over to this ball, and then it's got to come back. It's got to come back, and, and this one I think is just going to get stuck in the air. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, somebody caught it. All, all of our all of our private capital is deployed right now. We're refinancing it out. If we redeploy it into more real estate, I think the next round of ref, uh, refinances will get progressively more difficult. Um, I think we're going to hit thresholds that we've never even considered hitting because the lending environment is going to change. What do you mean by thresholds? I, th- I think I think they're just – I think what's going to end up happening is like right now where you can burr into something and you don't have to bring anything to close. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They'll roll in closing costs and all that. I think they're going to do away with that. I think the next the next phase will be you're going to have to bring equity. Bring in 20%. 20% maybe, maybe not. You're just going to have to put some skin in the game. I, I think once we get our private money back, I think we then – Splinter it into a um, almost into a um, a short term, like since all this is private money anyway, is all family relationship. I think we just pull it up, we give up a lot of equity, and we use that to buy money, buy buy real estate, and we can own it cash, and then we refinance whatever they were let us refinance out mm-hmm. of it, and then we redeploy that one more time, and then we just see how small the pot gets by the end. But then all the money stretched across, not over leveraged real estate, extremely under leveraged real estate that can rent. And then next next summer, the market comes back alive just because it's summer, right? There's a little little window there that will be back alive. You just bang, 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 sell a handful of them. Well, because no, we're I mean, at what the bank would lend at at the worst point. Yes, I think, and you and you and you, and you just you just you just spit them off to get more more of that capital back. But you do it with a small fund, say a million bucks. Say a million bucks spread across everybody, and and that million bucks will buy you five million dollars worth of real estate once with equity. Let's say let's say the next round it'll be two and a half million. So maybe that that million dollars gets you seven eight million dollars worth of real estate. That's now worth probably closer to sixteen million. Right. You know what or I mean. Twenty. Twenty. Whatever it is, you you have a ton of equity so there. But but the cash flow is tremendous. It's cash flowing tremendously well. You you, you know. You, you're in there. I I just think that's just a little something to ponder um, and and start putting those pieces because what the the shit part is you'll have people sit with money sitting idle for longer than you'd want. But if we can refinance a big swath of it all at once, um, we can we can spit it back out on something like that. Um, but if they have to sign personal guarantors on loans, you know, having a bank that won't require that will be key because you know your mom ain't going to want to sign no. Now she had more money on New Year. I just found out last yesterday. She's like, I think I can get two percent over here. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What 2%. are you talking? Yeah, I would have used her on that one more closing, the other jet loan, the uh, just to clean it up. Alvarado. Yeah. Are we closing that? Going to. I mean, it's set to close. God was. He's I'm freaking out. By Thursday, still freaking out today. To. Yeah. He's like, he's texting me right now. Like, I they haven't. It's not closed. Kitty won't call me. Like, well. We can get Kitty to call. Kitty's out of it right now. She just, I think she's still sick. Well, Um, let's roll. I'm out. (laughs) 
Hey, if you like what you uh, saw here today, hang around. Hit the like button. Come find us on the TikToks or the Instagrams.